can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 681 creating a sensation. At 9.10 p.m. Chinchin's form teacher, Zhao Mai, was at home watching television together with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend said, Zhong Yi's mouth is quite formidable. Is he really a relative of one of your students? Of course, didn't I tell you before? Zhao Mai said, Zhong Yi has come to our school so many times that our grades class teachers are already very familiar with him. Her boyfriend said, what is he like? Is he a troublemaker as the media reports him to be? Zhao Mai shook her head. No, he's quite a nice person and doesn't put on any airs. The two of them were chatting when suddenly, the intro clip of The Voice's first contestant appeared on screen. My name is Luo Yu and I'm a physical education teacher at a primary school. Since I was young until now, my classmates, friends, and colleagues all call me Raspi Luo. Each time I sing, people around me intentionally or unintentionally avoid me. No one has thought that I know how to sing or feels that my singing is good. Today, I would like to use the stage of the voice to prove myself. I want to let everyone know that a fat person also has dreams. No matter what people say about me, all I want to do is sing. The intro clip ended. The first contestant held a microphone and stood on stage. However, Zhao Mai was stunned when she saw this on television. Suddenly, she rose and exclaimed, Teacher Luo. It's Teacher Luo. Her boyfriend who also knew little Luo said, this, isn't this your school's PE teacher, Luo Yu? What the heck? How did she end up on The Voice? Zhao Mai could not believe what she saw. I don't know. At the same time, many of the other Beijing experimental primary school teachers who were also watching The Voice were dumbfounded. They even thought they were mistaken. It's Luo Yu. It's really little Luo. Why did teacher Luo go and join a singing competition? My God. Did they get it wrong? That lousy voice of little Luo, even her normal speaking voice is raspy. How could she sing? Who knows? Little Luo's too brave. Damn, teacher Luo really isn't afraid of losing face. Some of the teachers even called each other when they saw this. Hello, Zhao Mai, quick, go and watch Central TV Department 1. I'm watching it right now, it's teacher Luo. Ayo, hey what's going on? Do you know? I remember that day at the school field. Teacher Zhong seemed to be looking for teacher Luo, but I don't know what happened after that. I don't know what's going on now either. Teacher Luo's voice. At this moment, many of the students of experimental primary school, and their parents were also staring at Central TV Department 1's channel with their eyes and mouths wide open. They all recognized her. The TV now showed the audience. They all appeared very indifferent, like they did not have an interest in what was happening. Then the cameras focused on the four coaches. Zhong Yuanqi, doesn't look too good, does it? Chen Guang, I don't know. The musical introduction started, then the sound of the guitars and drums suddenly exploded. I've always been told I don't understand lyrics, composing, or singing. I've always been told I don't understand comfort, laughter, or living. I've always been told I don't understand passion, women, or romance. I've always been told I don't understand restraint, flexibility, or smarts. Listening up to here, Zhao Mai was already stunned. Zhao Mai's boyfriend was also so astonished that his eyes were like saucers. Including many of Luo Yu's colleagues from the school, all of them were shaken at this moment. This, this was sung by teacher Luo? Suddenly, Luo Yu's voice erupted. Who told you I can't sing? Who told you I don't understand living? Who told you I can't be cruel? Who told you I don't know glory? That screaming was a punch to everyone's gut. Zhao Mai exclaimed excitedly, so awesome. Little Luo is really awesome. Her boyfriend also exclaimed, they turned. All four coaches have turned. A language teacher who was teaching the same grade as Luo Yu nearly jumped up at this when she was watching the show at home. My God. Holy shit. A little boy from a class Luo Yu taught was stunned as he watched his physical education teacher performing in the glamour of the limelight. His face expressed his shock as if he did not know who the singer was. When the principal and several other school leaders of experimental primary school received this news from some of their school's teachers, 
they immediately switched on their television to see. The moment they heard Luo Yu singing, Who Told You I Don't Understand, they were also left stunned. They knew Luo Yu all too well. She was the odd one out among the teachers, always randomly singing on the playground or the hallways and irritating many people. Doing so. Once, the principal even asked to see her in the office to reprimand her stop singing, telling her that her voice was really terrible to listen to. But then, was it actually terrible to listen to? Thinking about it now, they realized that they had never seriously listened to Luo Yu singing before. Maybe it was because they felt that her appearance did not fit singing, that her raspy voice made her destined not to sing, so whenever she sang any song, they did not bother to truly listen or lay their eyes on her. Until today. Until they sat in front of their TVs and concentrated on listening to Luo Yu perform, and paid attention to her voice did they discover that actually, actually teacher Luo really knew how to sing. All of a sudden, Luo Yu's cell phone exploded with calls. Her relatives and friends were all calling to ask. Teacher Luo. Little Luo, what's going on? Little Yu, why were you on television? The internet also exploded with comments from the netizens. Oh my god. This voice is the be all, end all. This fat woman is awesome. Is she really a PE teacher? Where did Zhong Yi find such a great contestant? Who says that if you're ugly, you won't attract people? Who says that the voices contestants are all just amateurs? That their singing won't be good? I've always thought that I wouldn't be able to accept non-good looking people on a talent show, that's why I did not have much anticipation for the voice. But today I've realized I was wrong, because when a person sings a song with all their heart, the charm they exude is able to cover up everything else. I really like this PE teacher a lot. The coaches are unable to see their faces and can only hear their voice. Such cool design. So this is what the voice is like. How face smacking. Yeah, Zhong Yi slapped everyone's faces. Does she have to sing it so breathtakingly? It's only the first contestant to appear and the bar is already set so high. On screen, the fighting for the contestant part had begun. The coaches were all fighting each other for the contestant to join their teams. Chen Guang and Fan Wenli, the ideal couple who had a great battle, made everyone shout excitedly. Ha 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 ha. How funny is that? Fan Wenli was so funny. So they could even take contestants in this way. I've never before seen such a talent show contestant selection. Ah, she chose Chen Guang. Zhong Yi has really brought this program to life with its segments. Some people were already starting to, at, their friends on Weibo, quick, watch the voice. It's exciting. It's totally unlike what all the analysis and rumors said it to be. The second contestant appeared. Wow. He's a train driver? He's singing so emotionally. Oh God, I don't know what to say anymore. It's another great contestant. Then the next contestant. A housewife. Not bad at all. I like her, I like her. How have we never known that there were so many talented people among the common folk? Ah, the coaches have turned. The fourth contestant. The fifth contestant. The seventh contestant. The audience were also watching in anticipation. Soon, it was time for the last contestant to perform. However, this contestant was not introduced like the others. In the intro clip, the contestant could not be seen at all. It was simply a silhouette. Then a voiceover done by one of the staff members said, Our last contestant for today has a most unique voice. Will the coaches be able to accept this voice? Let us find out together. The contestant went on stage. The camera switched to the faces of the coaches, with their backs facing the stage which couldn't be seen clearly. On it was a very obscure figure of a person making it feel very mysterious. What's the meaning of this? What's with this person? I don't know. Let's listen and find out. The melody began and the voice drifted out. When will the moon be clear and bright? With a cup of wine in my hand, I ask the clear sky. In the heavens on this night, I wonder what season it would be. I'd like to ride the wind to fly home. Yet I fear the crystal and jade mansions are much too high and cold for me. Dancing with my moonlit shadow, it does not seem like the human world. The people in front of their televisions were all engrossed listening. 
How beautiful, this woman's voice is too beautiful. It has to be the best voice of today. What an elegant sounding voice. I'm getting drunk listening to it. With a voice like that, it must be a beautiful woman. Listen to that magnetic charm and the emotions in the singing. I guess it must be a beautiful woman in her thirties. Why isn't the camera showing her yet? Quick, focus on her. This was a huge tease, as all of the people could not wait any longer to find out the face behind the voice. At this moment, on TV, Chen Guang instantly hit the button and turned around. Along with the coach turning, the camera angles were cut together like they too were from the point of view of the coaches. It cut to the contestant who then appeared on the TVs. With this, when the people watching the program on television saw the contestant, a lot of them screamed with shock. Some of them jumped up from their chairs or sofas like they had touched an electric current. Ah. Oh my god. It's a man. F asterisk asterisk K, it's a man. This song was sung by a man? A man? That outfit, I think he should be a laborer? Without any despising looks or mocking laughter, when faced with this revelation of shockingly great contrast, all the people watching suddenly screamed in front of their TVs. I have goosebumps all over my body. This is so nice to listen to. It's great. Awesome. Too damn awesome. Is there anything more unbelievable than that? I just want to say this now. John Yi, you've won. You've got am won. Yes. John Yi has won. He has totally amazed me. I've realized that I've fallen for this program already. Qian Pingfan finished his performance. Whether it was on television or outside of it, none of the audience could maintain their calm. Beijing. A barbecue shop near Lishuikiao. A person pointed at the TV with his eyes wide and mouth agape. I know that person. I know him. He's the one who repairs bicycles in front of the station. The person sitting opposite him said, Are you serious? A woman said, You must have seen wrong. That person said, Impossible. He has repaired my bicycle twice for me. As it turned out, when the coaches interviewed Qian Pingfan on screen, he revealed his occupation. He's really a bicycle repairman? I have nothing I can say to that. How could a bicycle repairman sing that well? This program is going to get popular. I really take my hats off to Zhong Yi. This is the most surprising program I've watched this year. This is what a real singing talent show should be in my mind. For those who are waiting to see Zhong Yi make a joke of himself, denounced him and the voice of China, I wonder what their expressions are like now. That might not be for sure yet. It will still depend on the viewership ratings. Chapter 682 Yet another record-breaking high. In the vicinity of Central TV. At a rather good restaurant. The restaurant's operating hour was actually only up until 9 p.m., or at most extended until 9.30 p.m. for closing down. But now it was already past 10 p.m. and the restaurant was still open. There were even four tables of guests being served inside. As the owner of the restaurant and Jiang Yuan knew each other, and with this being the restaurant of choice for Central TV Department 1's events, with many years of business connections, if Jiang Yuan asked, the restaurant would definitely make an exception for them. Everyone, have a seat. There's no space left over here. There's still a table over there, if that's not enough, we can set up another table. Waiter, please serve the food and alcohol. Beer and wine. Around 30 people were here. Other than Jiang Yuan, there were the program team staff of The Voice as well as those staff members who were temporarily transferred from other program teams to help, out with the production. Although they did not officially belong to The Voice's team, they had still contributed a lot to it. Since it was a celebratory banquet, then it was only natural that all those involved should attend. There were two television sets in the restaurant and both were currently switched on and tuned into The Voice. The show was only halfway through broadcasting when they made their way here for the feast. Since the recording and the post-production was all done, the rest of the broadcast would be handled by the relevant people in Central TV Department 1. The work for Zhong Yi and his team was over for the day, so they could relax a little. Everyone had worked until they were exhausted over the past few days. The food had not yet been served, but the alcohol was. A few interns were fighting to pour the liquor for the others. 
Zhong Yi raised his glass. I propose that we make a toast to Director Jiang first. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the rest stood up one after another, while a few other women who were not drinkers also symbolically poured themselves a little beer as they all toasted, to Director Jiang. Jiang Yuan stood up and held up his hands to try to stop them. The first toast should not be for me. Logically, the first toast should be given to teacher Zhong Yi. If not for him, Central TV would not have this show today. If not for him working day and night, even living in the studio, the voice could not have possibly made it in time for the broadcast. This is the celebratory feast for your team and you guys are the leads. So I must insist that first toast be given to teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi declined, Director Jiang, that won't do. Come. Jiang Yuan raised his glass and said, a toast to you. Don't, don't. Zhong Yi said, not daring to accept this honor, let me toast you. In the end, everyone just toasted to Jiang Yuan and Zhong Yi together. Then, Jiang Yuan said, Teacher Zhong, why don't you make a short speech? Zhong Yi laughed, then looked at his subordinates. First, let's thank our director for his support. Without director Jiang's trust and support, we wouldn't be here today. Jiang Yuan waved it off and just smiled. Next, I want to thank all of you, Zhong Yi said sincerely. Other than thank you, it's still thank you. Thank you for trusting in me, sacrificing your sleep and rest for me and our show for the past several days. When other program teams work overtime, it's because they are forced to, but not ours. Everyone did it willingly, so when a few of our colleagues fell sick, I even had to push them to go home to rest, but they still stayed behind to help out, working while sick. I know that every one of you do it for me, because all of you trust me. I understand all of that. So I want to make a toast to all of you. They raised their glasses and clinked them together before drinking. Everyone started talking. Director Zhong, don't be so modest with us. What's the point of saying that? Yeah, that was what we were supposed to do. We'll toast you. Cheers. Zhong Yi's sincere thanks from the bottom of his heart touched everyone. Thinking about those days of endless and tiresome work that couldn't even be described, they felt lucky they managed to pull through. Under Zhong Yi's leadership, they were now about to reap the great harvest they deserved. Following that, everyone ate and drank. Aya, the broadcast is almost finishing. It's time for Qian Pingfan to appear. Ha ha, I bet everyone will be shocked by little Qian. Look, the comments on the internet have exploded. They're all discussing about our show. Yeah, I just saw it too. Everyone has very good comments for us, especially the reading of the advertising message by Director Zhong at the beginning. That shocked so many people. F asterisk asterisk K, Luo Yu has already become famous. Just how long has it been since she appeared in the show? Fans have already created a chia bar for her. It even has several hundred members already. It's going to cross 1,000 soon. Look at the Weibo headlines. They're about us too. So fast? Weren't we just in fifth place? We're now first. Ayo, hey then we have to toast again. Cheers. Beside Zhong Yi, Chen Chen sat there expressionlessly. She slowly took some food with her chopsticks and put it onto her plate. The little one had been with Zhong Yi for the past several days, going to school in the morning and then being brought by Luo Yu back to the television station in the evening. She slept at Central TV together with Zhong Yi and did not get much rest, so she looked very tired right now and was also sullen and upset at Zhong Yi at the moment. Zhong's were came over. Director Zhong, I want to toast you for giving us a valuable lesson with your program planning. Let me offer you a toast as well, Ha Chichi said. When I first read your proposal back then, I did not think that it would work out at all. I believe many others felt the same way but the results have proven that you were right, you saw further than any one of us, so let me offer you a toast. They clinked their glasses together. All right, don't stand on ceremony anymore. Chen Chen pouted. John Yi, drink less. I know, John Yi casually replied. A while later, someone else came to toast John Yi again. John Yi did not reject anyone. Come, cheers. Chen Chen said unhappily, John Yi, drink less. Zhong Yi said, how much have I drank? Okay, okay, I will not drink so much. 
Ha Chichi was very envious. Look at Chen Chen. She's so sensible, knowing to tell you to have less to drink. If I had a daughter like that, how great would it be? Zhong Yi said, then you better be prepared for tough days ahead. Chen Chen glared at Zhong Yi. Ha ha. At this moment, the broadcast of the voice ended. Jiang Yuan's cell phone rang. When he saw the number, he went outside immediately to answer it. About five minutes later, Jiang Yuan walked in with a smile on his face. I have some good news for everyone. I've just received an update three major online video hosting services have already contacted our station, hoping to get the exclusive rights to the Voice of China's online broadcast. Among them, one offered a sky-high price to secure the contract, can you all guess how much it is? Zhong Yi's contract with Central TV Department 1 was a little special. Other than Zhong Yi, Jiang Yuan and a few other people, most did not know the details. Before he signed with Central TV Department 1, Zhong Yi had a condition that he would get to keep the copyright to the voice. This applied more on any foreign exports of his show's format and the second or third seasons of The Voice, which meant that Zhong Yi could, on principle, move to another station with the right to reproduce his show there. It also meant that Central TV could not use the name and logo of The Voice of their own accord, though the first season of all such copyrights were provided to Central TV for free. For example, the television broadcast, the title sponsorship fee, the rights to stream the show via an online video hosting service, all of these deals would not be given to Zhong Yi at all and belonged fully to Central TV. This was the reason why Central TV Department 1 had agreed to the terms after a long round of discussions, as it had saved them a big chunk of their budget. Ha Chichi blinked. 30 million? Zhongs were guessed, 45 million? Little Wang said, could it be 50 million? You've all guessed wrong, Jiang Yuan said elatedly. There's an online video hosting service that is offering us an 80 million renminbi price to secure exclusive rights. Ah? 80 million? I'm gonna faint. This? Everyone was surprised at this news. It had to be said that they were unable to sell the online exclusive rights all this time not because no one would buy it but because all the offers so far did not satisfy Zhong Yi's estimates. Some offered 20 million, some 10 million, and the highest offer was only 25 million renminbi. But like for those advertising rights quotes, Zhong Yi did not step back on the prices and maintained a minimum base cost. Zhong Yi would rather hold them in hand than to take a lower price, and because of this matter, the station had also talked to Zhong Yi on several occasions, though he did not waver at all. However, looking at it now, Zhong Yi had once again proven the brilliance of his strategy. Jiang Yuan was also celebrating in his mind, thinking how lucky it was that the station did not overwrite Zhong Yi and sell off the online exclusive rights and advertising rights fee for cheap, otherwise, they would have suffered an enormous loss. It was a good thing that they listened to Zhong Yi. 80 million renminbi. The voice's production fees were only over 100 million, which was more or less covered by the title sponsorship already. So that meant they didn't make any losses or profit from there. Thereafter, once the remaining advertising rights fees and exclusive rights were sold, this would all become pure profit for Central TV Department 1. What kind of a concept was a net gain of 80 million? Even if Central TV Department 1 were to combine a full 24 hours of shows on a Thursday, a total of more than a dozen programs such as drama series and interview programs, they wouldn't be able to earn 80 million per season. But with just one show from Zhong Yi, he managed to do it. He made the voice earn more than the total combined output of more than a dozen programs added together. And this did not even include the unsold advertising rights fees yet. Just calculating it like that, it would be enough to scare anyone. Besides, getting an 80 million renminbi copyright sold for an exclusive online broadcast was the highest amount in the industry. Not only was it the most for the current ongoing programs, but it's also the most in the history of all programs. No other variety show had ever gotten an exclusive online broadcast fee of more than 60 million. But now Zhong Yi had rewritten the records for China's variety world and increased it by 20 million. This was crazy. Central TV was crazy. The Voices program team was crazy. The entire television industry was crazy. After the records of the title sponsorship and the production budget, the Voice of China had once again broken and set a new record for a variety show. Chapter 683 The Night That Belonged to the Voice Online 
this news was exposed. It wasn't leaked news, but the information was announced by the online video hosting service themselves. Their vice president had directly announced this on Weibo to say that they were investing 80 million to purchase the exclusive online broadcast rights to the Voice of China, thus creating a gigantic wave. How exciting! That much money? Is the voice really worth that amount? Only one episode has been shown so far, and they're already spending so much money to buy the rights. Am I crazy or has the world gone crazy? Isn't that too risky? Yeah, they should at least wait for the viewership ratings to be released first. If the viewership ratings released tomorrow show that it performed very well, then the might would be worth it. But if it's not as high as expected, then their money will have gone to waste. Was there a need to rush like that? Couldn't they have waited another day? Did they have to buy it today no matter what? That may not be it. If the viewership for the voice goes through the roof and performs beyond expectations, then by tomorrow, 80 million would not even be able to secure the rights. There might even be more competition and they would not stand a chance to get it anymore. They probably tabled an irresistible offer to Central TV Department 1 that they could no resist, hoping to gain an advantage and betting on Zhong Yi and the voice. F asterisk asterisk K, this is no longer a world I can understand. Yeah, I don't understand it either. This is way too crazy. Right now, no matter how the viewership ratings turn out, Zhong Yi has already come through with flying colors. He used his abilities to help Central TV Department 1 earn over 100 million. On top of that, it looks like The Voice does not only have those income streams, so it will definitely only get higher. He's raking in a profit too quickly. Even a gust of wind is not this quick. I can only say, comparison always ends up torturing people, comparison always ends up trashing products. The other variety shows are all finding it difficult to meet their targets and have always been struggling just to keep things moving along. As long as they don't lose money and be slightly in the black, they are satisfied. But what about the voice? Zhong Yi had only just set up some stage, but he can still get people to throw their money at the show with his eyes closed. It's the same type of singing show, but why is there such a gulf in the gap? Looking at those other, pitiful singing variety shows, I don't have the heart to watch them anymore. What's more, they were rushed to finish it to fill the slot. Right, on top of that, Thursday night slot isn't exactly a good time either. Is that what Zhong Yi's true capabilities are like? The citizens were shocked. The industry was in an uproar. At the restaurant. Only Zhong Yi did not seem that surprised. Jiang Yuan looked at him and said, Little Zhong, what do you think of the offer? Zhong Yi smiled and said, It's okay. Should we sell it? Jiang Yuan wanted to hear his opinion. Zhong Yi knew when he had to take a step back. I will leave that to you and the leaders. Whatever the decision is, I will respect it, so anything is fine. The offered amount was somewhat similar to Zhong Yi's expectations. Back in his previous world, the voice's initial exclusive online broadcast rights were worth around 100 million, so this new offer here wasn't that far off and not a big matter. Besides, he had to consider the market demand of this new world as well. Jiang Yuan laughed, then we will sell it. You all can carry on eating, I will go back to handle this matter and find someone of the other party we can talk to regarding the contract. Zhong Yi said, but we've only just started eating, you haven't had much yet. Jiang Yuan said, previously, you were the one doing all the work. Now it's my turn. Before he left, Jiang Yuan looked at Zhong Yi and said, Little Zhong, you've really helped Central TV Department 1 win back some vindication this time. Zhong Yi smiled blissfully. Since Central TV has recruited me to join them, I definitely must do my best. Jiang Yuan nodded and then left. Central TV Department 1 had always been somewhat average when it came to variety shows, and could even be said that it was already falling behind. Compared to many of the provincial satellite channels, they couldn't even compare anymore. But now, Zhong Yi's arrival had single-handedly helped them turn things around. In an instant, Central TV Department 1 had jumped into the lead from someplace in the middle pack. It was evident that Zhong Yi's capabilities were there, just like what some people had said of him before, this was truly a person who could work miracles. The only thing missing now was the finalized viewership ratings figure. Just how much would it be? 
Just how much could they get? Jiang Yuan did not want to even venture a guess. At this moment, Zhong's was cell phone rang and he went outside to answer it. When he came back, he immediately reported to Zhong Yi about the situation, Director Zhong, one of the advertisers contacted me about their interest to purchase the rights to a first-tier advertisement. Zhong Yi asked, how much are they offering? Zhong Zhuo said, I don't know, I haven't gotten a quote from them yet. How much do you think we should ask for? Zhong Yi said, was it one of those companies we were in discussions with before? Yeah, it's the executive of He He Dairy Industry, the one who met you in your office before. Zhong Zhuo said, they've come back after all. Zhong Yi nodded and said, give them a quote of 4 million. The universal price for the first-tier advertising rights will be 4 million. Zhongs were asked, wasn't it 3 million before? Surely they won't agree if we ask for 4 million, right? Besides, we've already broadcast one episode, so that's an episode less for their advertisements. Zhong Yi explained, you can't look at it that way. In the past, our show was not broadcast yet and not many people were optimistic about it. But now that it's been so well received, the show will get popular because of that. The only question left is how popular it will get. Now that they've approached us again, the price will definitely have to be set by us. Even if it's an episode fewer, the price will not remain the same as previously stated. Otherwise, if we keep it at 3 million and sell it to them, it would be unfair to the two companies who bought the first tier advertising rights. They had risked uncertainty and spent 3 million on our program, but now that it has gotten popular, the other advertisers no longer face that risk, so how could the entry point for them still be 3 million? The difference is only an episode fewer of promotions. Do you think those who signed with us at the beginning would be happy? Would it be fair to them? Zhong Zhuo nodded his head firmly. That's true. Zhong Yi said, we will stick to this new pricing, so for the second and third tiers of advertising rights, raise them by one third too. You don't have to worry that nobody will buy them. All right. Zhongs were understood. At this time, Ha Chichi also remembered the day the advertisers came to Zhong Yi's office to discuss the advertisements but did not come to an agreement. After they had left, Zhong Yi told Ha Chichi and the others that those companies would come to rue their decisions that day. As it turned out, Zhong Yi's words really came true. The celebratory banquet finished rather quickly. In the end, during the second half of the dinner and after some seven or eight calls, the unsellable advertisements for The Voice had all been bought at a 30 to 40 percent higher price than previously, even when the contractual terms remained the same. All sold out in 20 minutes. That demand was too explosive. The feeling was like they were all snapped up as if they didn't cost money. After the contracts were verbally agreed upon over the phone, some of the advertisers who were still not feeling assured immediately sent over their lawyers and representatives to Central TV with the contracts to get them signed. They were afraid that The Voice would be recording its second episode very soon, and if they did not get the contract settled early, they might get delayed in the involvement of the second episode and miss out on another chance at publicity. Additionally, they knew that there were limited advertising spots, so if anyone came ahead of them, then they might miss out on the entire opportunity altogether. In just the blink of an eye, another 20 million renminbi had entered Central TV's accounts. Along with these advertisers, there were many other companies that approached them. Some wanted to get the rights to exclusive interviews and some entertainment companies expressed their interest to sign certain contestants. Zhong Yi did not need to deal with all these himself and just left them for Ha Chichi and Zhong were to handle. While some decisions they couldn't make on the program team level were redirected straight to Central TV Department 1. Li Shui Qiao. At a certain rented apartment. Qian Pingfan's master, who taught him how to repair bicycles, held him by his shoulders tightly. Good kid, you were really great. Qian Pingfan scratched his head and said, Master, I don't wish to repair bicycles in the future any longer, is that okay? You're still thinking of repairing bicycles? His master laughed. Just continue singing your songs well. Don't embarrass me. Unknowingly, Qian Pingfan's eyes turned teary. Master. Luo Yu's home. After Luo Yu answered a call, she made several calls. Suddenly, she cried out wildly, Dad. Mom. What's the matter? Her parents came running to her. 
Luo Yu was almost unable to speak. I, I, they, there's a management agency that wants to sign me. They want to sign me as a singer. Mother Luo was surprised. What? Father Luo couldn't hide his happiness. Really? Is that true? Luo Yu was tearing up. It's true. It was teacher Chen Guang's agency that wanted to sign me. IIV already verified it with teacher Chen Guang. It was he who recommended me to his company. Then when I called teacher Zhong Yi, he told me to wait a little longer and not rush to sign. He said that if I sign now, the terms of the contract would only be SOSO. Teacher Zhong offered to help me speak to teacher Chen's agency after the competition is halfway through so that he can fight for the best contract terms for me. Sign a contract? Mother Luo hugged her daughter tightly when she heard that. My God! My daughter is going to be a singer! Tears streamed down Luo Yu's face as she cried, Dad! Mom! I didn't let you all down after all! I, I didn't embarrass the two of you! A lot of people's destinies were changed because of the voice. A lot of people's hearts were thumping for the voice. On this Thursday evening, the night belonged to the voice of China. Countless people were screaming for the voice. Countless people were going crazy for the voice. Chapter 684 The End The next day. At 8 a.m. in the morning, a cool wind was blowing on the streets. After a good night's sleep, the first thing Zhong Yi did when he woke up was bring Chen Chen to Kaishiku. He drove into the district where his parents' home was and randomly parked his car in the not too large open space below their apartment. Let's go. Zhong Yi unbuckled his seatbelt. Okay. Chen Chen was still playing on Zhong Yi's cell phone, tapping here and there on it in a game. Zhong Yi urged her, Come on, we're already here. Only then did Chen Chen slowly get out of the car. Don't keep playing on my phone until there's no battery. I still have to take calls, Zhong Yi said. Zhong Yi had taken the day off today, or rather, more than half of the Voices program team had been given the day off. This was specially approved by the station. After having been kept tremendously busy for two weeks without rest, now that the first episode had been successfully completed, they definitely had to have some time off to recharge and rest. After all, there had to be a balance between work and relaxation. If they actually had to work continuously for three months without a single day of rest, who could take it? That would end up affecting their work negatively instead. In the district, a few elderly neighbors were already up and going to their morning exercises. Grandma Kui waved from afar. Little Yi, you're back. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Ari, Grandma Kui, how have you been? Rather good, rather good. Grandma Kui said excitedly, our whole family was watching your show last night. It was very enjoyable to watch, the show was great. Zhong Yi said happily, oh, you have my gratitude. Grandpa Li who was just stretching his arm warming up said kindly, everyone is talking about your show now. Are the viewership ratings out yet? Zhong Yi said, not yet. Auntie Chen asked, when will it be released? Zhong Yi replied, it's not definite. I'm also waiting for it. Grandma Kui said, all the best then. Our neighbors are all supporting you. We even switched on both TVs at home yesterday and tuned them to Central TV Department 1's channel, haha. I did that at my place too. We must support Little Yi's shows. John Yi immediately thanked all his elders before finally bringing Chen Chen into the building. On the way up, John Yi reminded, Chen Chen, when you see them later, remember to greet them as grandpa and grandma, understand? As Chen Chen climbed up the stairs while playing on the cell phone, she said, Okay. Okay, that's enough. Stop playing and return my phone to me. Zhong Yi snatched it back from her. Chen Chen was not having any of that. Zhong Yi, give it back to me. Give it back. Zhong Yi put it back into his pocket. You've already played for the whole morning, rest your eyes. Chen Chen said, Zhong Yi, I want to play a while more. No. Zhong Yi avoided her just as they came to the house. Before he could even knock, the door opened and his mother appeared behind the security door. I could hear you talking to Grandma Kui from up here. Is this your landlord's kid? Zhong Yi pulled Chen Chen into the house. Yes, she's Rao Chen Chen. He saw his father and waved to him. Dad. 
his father nodded back and then also came over to look at Chen Chen. Whoa, such a beautiful child. When Chen Chen saw Zhong Yi's parents, she greeted them, Grandpa, Grandma. His mother was already smiling widely. This child is really cute, she looks just like a porcelain doll. But her nature is like a chihuahua. Zhong Yi added, the two of you better not take her to be like any other child. She's shrewd like an adult. His mother did not like him saying that. Heh, what chihuahua? How can you say that? What a good child. Come here Chen Chen. Have you eaten breakfast? No. Let grandma prepare something for you. Chen Chen said in her childish voice, thank you, grandma. No need to thank me at all. His mother liked her greatly and kept looking at her. What a pretty child. Little Yi, you better hurry up and find a partner so that your father and I can have a grandson, well, a granddaughter would be good too. Zhong Yi slumped onto the sofa listlessly. Okay, okay, okay. Chen Chen suddenly asked, Grandma, do you have a cell phone? His mother asked curiously, yes, why? Chen Chen said, I want to play on it. Zhong Yi's eyes widened. Don't give it to her. She has been secretly playing on my phone for two hours since I woke up. But his mother said, kids this age always play, it's fine. Come here, grandma will give you her phone. Chen Chen took it from here and immediately found a chair to sit on and started playing. Zhong Yi said in a speechless manner, you'll spoil her. His mother said, it's just for a while, what are you scared of? His father asked, how have you been? Your mom and I were watching The Voice last night. I don't really get it, but your mom keeps saying it's great. When this topic was brought up, his mother's attention was perked. With that intelligence of yours, what will you understand? How can this program not be nice to watch? It's so good that even I want to go and join the competition. Those contestants were each singing better than the other, especially that Qian Ping fan. His voice was be all, end all. Zhong Yi laughed. My show isn't too bad, right? It's too good. How are the viewership ratings? His mother asked. It's not out yet, I'm guessing they will announce it in the afternoon, Zhong Yi said. His mother joyfully said, all right, let me prepare breakfast for you and Chen Chen. We'll talk about it again after eating. Zhong Yi said, quickly please. I'm so hungry I could faint. Suddenly, his cell phone rang. It was a call from Dong Shanshan. Shan. Hello, Shanshan, Shan, Zhong Yi answered. Dong Shanshan Shan immediately asked when the call connected, tell me about the viewership ratings. Zhong Yi said, it's not even out yet. Dong Shanshan Shan said, what about the preview report? I didn't see it either. There's no preview report this time. We'll have to wait for the direct report in the afternoon, Zhong Yi said. You're already the fifth person to call me and ask about the viewership ratings today. At least you're calling me in the morning. That old Yao called me at 3 a.m., what the heck? Dong Shanshan Shan laughed, that's true. How many industry insiders are not concerned about the situation regarding the viewership for The Voice now? All of the TV stations and industry insiders are paying their full attention to it. Zhong Yi said, surely not. Dong Shanshan Shan said, what do you mean by surely not? Do you know how many TV stations have done concise research and analysis on the voice internally? Your new program has not only shocked the audience, even the industry is in an uproar because of it. As executive producer Hu Fei put it this morning, it is a phenomenal variety show that should be thought of as a textbook example. Didn't you go on the internet? There are many people and media outlets online who are predicting the viewership ratings of the voice. After hanging up, Zhong Yi lowered his head and spotted seven or eight sets of newspapers lying on the coffee table. They were all this morning's newspapers. It didn't even warrant a question. It must have been his mother who bought them. Zhong Yi immediately picked one up and started browsing through them. Every newspaper's entertainment page had news of the voice in it. Central TV Department 1's ultimate comeback. All around praise for the voice of China. Zhong Yi vs Industry Peers, comes away with another victory. Just what will viewership of The Voice be? Can Zhong Yi get last laugh? The Voice of China, Grand Gathering of Music. Carnival created by Zhong Yi and Central TV Department 1. 
The Voice's shocking launch. New model for variety shows may be born. The Voice creates 100 million renminbi wealth for Central TV Department 1. Zhong Yi once again creates legend. Traditional Big Brother Central TV working hand in hand with Zhong Yi to redeem throne as variety Big Brother. Zhong Yi adjusted the newspaper a little. Whoa, all the articles are praising me. His father said, your mom didn't buy those that didn't. Zhong Yi. Checking online, there was also all kinds of news about the voice being published. There was an article that was written like this. It read as follows, I've never hidden my admiration for Zhong Yi, just like how Zhong Yi has never hidden his ambition for the arts. We're seeing Zhong Yi's new work once again, and also seeing Zhong Yi fighting with his peers once more. How many times has it been? I don't believe that it's only me, but many others who probably have already lost count as well. Before the broadcast of The Voice, there were many people from the television industry who joined in the boycott and denouncement of Zhong Yi. Even after the program has been broadcast, after they have witnessed such an exciting show, there are still those who are harboring hopes that The Voice's viewership ratings will not meet expectations somehow, wanting to call The Voice a show that's good but has no appeal. I have to say this, but do people like this think they can surpass Zhong Yi? Do they think they can also produce a world-class program like that? Dream on. This is the reason why China's variety shows are all going downhill. I'm sure I will get critics regarding this article, that I will be scolded or insulted. But I'm not afraid. All I want to ask is, which of our own Chinese variety shows have the potential to move out of the domestic market? Just tell me, which one? In all these decades, none has been able to do so. All we have are foreign, imported shows that we spend large sums of money to purchase licensing and spend all our energy on trying to promote them. But now? Zhong Yi's appearance has changed the entire situation. There are already people overseas who have seen Zhong Yi's talk show, and at least two foreign teams are already discussing importing the talk show to their shores. I've received news that foreign television stations are already prepared to make an offer to buy Zhong Yi's copyrights, our Chinese copyrights, to the show. There's even a possibility of Zhong Yi becoming their consultant to the show. When all these will be confirmed is just a matter of time. What no one has been able to achieve in decades of our domestic variety world has been achieved by Zhong Yi. Only he has been able to do it. So isn't it worth it for us to support a person like that? Is it not worth our effort to go and love and protect him? But what is the truth of all that is happening? They are saying that Zhong Yi has stolen all the limelight for himself and wrecked people's careers. The industry and many of his peers are all boycotting him. It's all a huge mess. I really want to laugh at this. But at the same time, I feel like crying. Is the voice not worthy of its title sponsorship and joining fees? Based on what reason is it not worthy of it? Please do not compare it to those shows and standards of yours. You all think that the voice's viewership ratings will not be good because the variety show market is in a downturn. The market is too small? The market is too saturated? That's basically a pack of bull. If your viewership ratings are not good, that only goes to show that your shows are not crafted well enough. It only shows that your standards are not good enough. Those are all excuses that you all are using to cover up your failures. But what I believe in, or am willing to believe in, is that The Voice will definitely give us fully satisfactory viewership ratings. If you don't believe so, let's just wait and see. I have every confidence in The Voice and even more so in Zhong Yi. The End after reading it, Zhong Yi was elated. Well said. Very well said. Just look at those words, just look at those paragraphs, it's all extremely professional. Chapter 685 The viewership ratings that shocked the whole country. Online. Starting from last night, the talk surrounding the voice did not stop being discussed at all. Even at 3, 4 a.m. in the morning, there were still netizens who were discussing the show, contestants as well as Zhong Yi's amazing recital speed. There were all kinds of discussions about the show but weren't too focused on one subject. However, since this morning, the netizens and industry insiders were only talking about one thing. The most repeated topic was, just how high viewership ratings the voice would get. It's still not out yet? How slow? I've already watched the voice three times over since last night. I've been waiting since nighttime, 
but there wasn't even a preview report released. It's almost 9 a.m., is the staff not awake yet? Hurry up and quickly compile all the information. The entire nation is waiting for it. Hurry, hurry, hurry. F asterisk asterisk K, this is not a matter of waking up or whatever. The collection of the viewership ratings is very complex, and requires a compilation of many figures and statistics before they can give us the most accurate viewership figures. I'm looking forward to it. I'm so anxious. Me too, I really want to know how high they were. I wonder if the voice can beat those shows imported from Korea. Don't you know Jong Yi's nickname? This dude is the leader of professional Korean insulters. Somehow, I get the feeling that he made this show to attack those Korean shows. I know Jong Yi too well. Everyone, prepare yourselves a little first. Most shows do not fare too well in their first episodes, unless they are those foreign imported shows that have already been well known for a while. Either that or they are phenomenal shows which are already in their second or third seasons and already have an audience base. Those are the ones who have the possibility to hit 1% in the viewership ratings. Otherwise, even our domestic variety shows which are very popular only get 0.7% to 0.8% for their premiere episodes. Even those with an average viewership rating of 1.1% needed to slowly gain and accumulate popularity. So, my guess is that The Voice will get 0.9% for its premiere episode, or about 0.85%, thereabouts. And that's on the conservative side. The person above has analyzed well. Agreed, don't have too high expectations, otherwise, if the viewership ratings don't turn out so well, I really wouldn't be able to accept it. Premiere episode getting 0.9%? That's already defying all logic. I don't think that will be all. This show is very enjoyable to watch, so we cannot use our usual standards to judge it, nor should we analyze it that way. The Voice's premiere episode will get 1% at the very least no matter what. For sure. Is there a chance for 1%? What suspense? Even if it's unlikely, anything is possible. I also think The Voice will do well. Jong Yi's really awesome. I love Jong Yi so much. I love The Voice too. This is what a real singing show should be like. This is what you call the most sincere form of art. A like for teacher Jong. Many of those who worked in the television industry also gave their stand on things, and did their own analysis and viewership rating estimates of the show. Like Beijing Television's Hu Fei, he predicted 1.2%, which was very high. And Beijing Television's host, Dong Shanshan, who also posted on Weibo predicted the voice to hit 1.1% in the viewership ratings. That was very high as well. Weiwa online television stations Wang Xiong gave a prediction of 1%. Central radio stations Tianbin predicted 0.95%. Just before 10 a.m., a Weibo poll was created by the official Weibo site. It was a poll to let all the netizens predict the viewership ratings of the voice. There were five options to vote for. 1. Viewership rating of 0.5% and below. 2. Viewership rating between 0.5 to 0.8%. 3. Viewership rating between 0.8 to 1%. 4. Viewership rating between 1 to 1.2%. 5. Viewership rating between 1.2 to 1.5%. The netizens all rushed to vote at once. Choose option 4. F asterisk asterisk K, option 4. Isn't that too high? Yeah, option 3 seems to be the most likely result. I'll choose option 5. Damn, that option is definitely impossible. Option 5, that's way too high. Ahem, calm down, calm down. I like the voice too, but the fifth option is really kinda outrageous. Much less the voice's premiere episode, even those popular variety shows still airing now or those Korean, American, Japanese licensed programs would at most get an average of 1.3% or so. Like that recent Korean licensed reality TV show, its viewership rating now is at 1.4%, right? The best it got did not even pass 1.5%, am I right? That is already the peak of variety shows these days for the nationwide, simultaneous daily time slot top spot, nationwide weekly top spot, and nationwide monthly top spot. A reality TV show licensed from Japan shown on Sundays has a viewership rating of 1.35%, and 
and that's already the top for Sunday's nationwide simultaneous time slot. It only got second overall for the nationwide monthly viewership ratings, behind that Korean licensed show. As you can see, this is the overall situation for the state of variety shows these days, with the other average variety shows struggling to get around 0.5%. The voice wants to achieve 1.2 to 1. 5% viewership ratings in just its first episode? Thinking of challenging those extremely popular foreign licensed shows immediately after broadcasting the premiere episode? That's definitely too unbelievable. Why would that be impossible? There's no limit to my confidence in John Yi. Supporting. We will choose option 5 without explanation. Ah, uh, I also hope that the voice will contend on behalf of our domestically produced variety shows. I too hope that the voice can outperform those foreign licensed shows, but this still isn't likely, after all, it's only the first episode. We can wait until later, when the voice grows more popular and gathers more viewers. When the voice goes to the finals of the competition, we can fight it out with all those other shows for first place. To compete and find out who is better. We still have to wait for that many episodes. We must settle this once and for all with the first episode. Right, kill them. Who cares? Wasn't the voice viewed with pessimism back then? Didn't everyone think that those words, to see other summits dwarfed, and savor the scene, uttered by teacher John were pure nonsense? Then let's show them the people who don't know the immensity of the universe. I shall choose option 5 as well. F asterisk asterisk K them. When it came to foreigners or foreign related things, some of those people did not even look or ask any questions. They were definitely John Yi's fans as only he would have so many nationalistic fans like himself. Whenever they saw something foreign, it was like they were on stimulants, cursing and swearing without control. 5. I choose 5 too. Yes, we can't lose on momentum alone. Voting for option 5. Supporting John Yi. Supporting our domestic variety shows. Right. Let's fight it out with those foreign imported shows in the viewership ratings. The resolute John Yi fans moved many people as they also went along and voted for the impossible option, 1.2 to 1.5%. Finally, after two hours, the poll results were finalized. A total of 35,000 people voted. Option 1, 6%. Option 2, 9%. Option 3, 18%. Option 4, 42%. Option 5, 25%. The majority of the netizens still voted for option 4, 1 to 1.2%, as this was the most likely and hopeful outcome, or because it was a result they wanted to see. When a few leaders of Central TV Department 1 saw the online poll results, they lightly nodded their heads in agreement. This poll reflected the predictions they had in mind as well. They were hoping that the voice would be able to get off to a winning start and get 1% in the viewership ratings to help them get the top spot for the nationwide simultaneous time slot for Thursday. As for the weekly or monthly nationwide viewership ratings, they did not think that far. After all, there were so many 1.3 to 1.4% Japanese and Korean licensed programs blocking their way to get that result. Hachichi was very surprised at the results of the poll, because her own predictions were not even that high. She had not expected the netizens to think so highly of them and trust in them. Jongswa did not even see this poll. He was at home, unable to stay settled, feeling very nervous and full of anticipation. He kept checking his phone to see if there were any updates of the viewership ratings. Other than Central TV, the other television station were also fully focused. Liadong Television Station. Is it out yet? Not yet. Haha, <laughs> did you see the voting by the netizens? I saw it, they're all just lay people. Yeah, indeed, their thinking is too amateurish. They're even people who chose option 5? Do they really believe that the voice will get 1.2 to 1.5% of the viewership ratings? They're just blindly voting, but it doesn't matter whichever one they vote for. Shanghai Television Station. How much do you guys think it will be? 0.9%, I guess. That's more like it. Looking at the votes from the netizens, they're really being too optimistic. That's because they don't understand the situation in the industry. Yes, although I don't wish to admit this, 
there really aren't any domestically produced shows that can beat the viewership ratings of a foreign licensed program. A Beijing television station. I hope that the voice will give us something to cheer about. Though it's not likely that it will surpass 1% in the viewership ratings, right? It's all up to Teacher Zhong. We definitely need to support it. After all, Teacher Zhong was a host who walked through the doors of Beijing Television Station. Hopefully it can hit 1%. There were even more negative responses at the television station where the variety show licensed from Japan was shown at, especially within that program's team itself. They won't be able to do it. Trying to compete with us in viewership is definitely impossible. Yeah, how can they compete with 1.35%? The netizens are such teases, why are they even voting for option 5? The voice's viewership rating might not even pass 0.9%. It's just the first episode after all. Back then, Zhong Yi even dared to spout nonsense of overtaking all the variety shows? Claiming that all the variety shows in the country won't be better than his. I would like to see just how high the viewership of the voice will get. He's truly too arrogant. Everyone's predictions were different. Every television station's prediction was also different. But the common thing among them was that everyone was paying crazy attention to the viewership ratings of the voice. Suddenly, at noon, just past 12 pm, the nationwide viewership ratings for Thursday's variety shows were released under the focus of numerous people. Ah. It's here, it's here. Let me take a look. Damn it, it's finally released. What's the situation like? How high was the voice? Countless netizens had gathered at once. Countless industry insiders were observing. However, when they saw the statistics for the viewership ratings, everyone was shocked. In their minds, they could only say something along the lines of, what the f asterisk asterisk k to your second granny. How's that possible? Heavens! I've been blinded. F asterisk asterisk K your grandfather. This, was this compiled erroneously? The figure on the statistics report was totally shocking to look at. The voice of China's first episode of viewership, 2.01%. Chapter 686 number 1 in the nation. Jiangnan television station. The staff were all quiet. Some just stayed silent. Some were shocked and at a loss for words. Liadong Television Station. In a certain program team's office. A leader held the viewership ratings report and came out of his office. Someone tell me that these viewership statistics are wrong. How could it goddamn break the two-point barrier? No one spoke. No one could answer the leader on this question. It was not wrong, and couldn't possibly be wrong. The viewership ratings were real. It was indeed a two-point rating. Two. One percent. A certain program team behind a show using Korean copyrights. The office was in an uproar, everyone confused, what's going on? Just what is going on? Our viewership ratings, were, were surpassed by the voice. Oh my god. Something must have gone wrong somewhere. How did it turn out like that? F asterisk asterisk K. How could the voice get such a high viewership rating? Wei were online television station. The ex-colleagues of Zhong Yi were all shocked with their mouths agape. Every one of them was more excited than the other. He's done it. Teacher Zhong really did it. F asterisk asterisk K yeah. Our country has finally produced a local copyrighted variety show that has put great pressure on those foreign copyrighted shows. How godly. John Yees is too damn godly. This is so unbelievable. How is that possible? How's that possible? Are John Yee and the voice both on steroids? Does it have to get such a high viewership rating? Yeah, I guess that the voice would get a very high viewership rating, but I didn't expect it to be this high. In the current market of variety programs, how could there be a show that broke the two point barrier? A Beijing television station. Hu Fei held the viewership ratings report for Thursday's variety shows that was disseminated by the management, and stared at it dumbfounded for a long time. Then he quietly took a cigarette from the table beside him and lighted it. He had already quit smoking for a long time, so when he took a puff from it, he violently coughed and then went on to aggressively curse, what the f asterisk asterisk k. 
Hearing the loud shout from Hufei's office, the program team staff of Do You Remember also cried out. No one could hold it in any longer. Xiao Lu, someone, please pinch me. Is this for real? Hu Ji, your third uncle's grandma. Hu Di, this defies all common sense. This totally defies all common sense. Da Fei, the voice is crazy. Teacher Zhong is a crazy man. Dong Shan Shan was shocked into silence. At Central TV. The Central TV leaders were all dumbfounded. Jiang Yuan was dumbfounded. Ha Chichi was dumbfounded. Zhong Zhuo was dumbfounded. All of the Voices program team staff were dumbfounded. How much? Can someone repeat it to me again? F asterisk asterisk K, we got a viewership rating of 2. 1%. I'm getting dizzy, someone support me a little. I can't stand straight either anymore. The industry was in an uproar. The entire population was also in an uproar. The voice's viewership ratings had topped the entire variety world. Number one for the same time slot. Number one for the entire week. Number one for the entire month. Number one for the entire year. And this was only for the premiere episode's viewership. And this was even for a program that was scheduled in a Thursday evening broadcast slot. Countless citizens did not know how else they could express their current mood. Countless industry insiders also did not know how they could express their amazement at this. They only felt that a million lines of what the F asterisk asterisk K were flashing in front of their eyes over and over and over again. At this point, many people suddenly remembered the poll that was started on Weibo regarding the viewership ratings of The Voice. It now looked to be a total joke. What were the given options? 0.5% and below. 0 0.5-0.8%. 0.8-1.0%. 1.0-1.2%. 1.0-1.2%. In the end, none of the votes that the netizens made were correct. Not a single person guessed right about the Voice's viewership ratings, because, because the Voice's finalized viewership ratings weren't even included in the options of this poll. The option for a result that exceeded 1.5% did not even f asterisk asterisk king appear. Why was there no such option made available? Why was there no option given for 1.5% and above? It wasn't because the official Weibo account was careless but because no one had ever expected that a premiere episode of a variety show would exceed 1.5%. They did not even expect it to hit 1.5%, let alone exceed it. That was the reason why the poll starter did not create such an option nor consider the possibility of including one. The trend of the variety show market in recent years, and the many years of experience in the television industry told them that this was not a possible outcome. However, today, The Voice did it. In the market of TV variety where it was common to get a zero-point viewership rating, Zhongyi had achieved a two-point rating. Today, at this moment, Zhongyi along with his new show had scored a victory over those doubters who mocked them. A title sponsorship record. An exclusive online broadcast fee record. A production budget record. A production timeline record. And a viewership rating record. It was a chain of records. The Voice of China had broken the records one by one, and with each feat, sent a shockwave across the country. The doubters were all left speechless from anger. Those who mocked the program fell silent. For the first time, they seemingly remembered what sort of person Zhong Yi was. For the first time, they seemingly remembered all the things that happened with Zhong Yi. The media reports were overwhelmingly flooding in. The media was going in overdrive. 562 Citizen Journalism, John Yi, Miracle Maker. Phoenix Sun Daily, The Voice's viewership shatters the ceiling. The Light of Local Variety. Entertainment Blast, The Voice climbs to top of Variety World. Taking nationwide number one spot. On the front page of Tierbar, The Voice's viewership ratings break two points, how did this miracle occur? Youth Spirit Discussion Forums, The Voice leads local copyrighted shows into battle against foreign copyrighted shows. News headlines on Weibo's front page, The Attack of Domestically Produced Shows. Zhong Yi sounds the bugle for retaliation. Putting pressure on all foreign copyrighted shows. People's Daily Online News, Miracle? No. 
this was a divine act of God. Beijing Times, a day that belongs to Zhong Yi and his The Voice. Nationwide Morning News, a hero of the television industry, a legend of the variety world, please put your hands together for The Voice and Zhong Yi. Suddenly, a poem reappeared once more on Weibo. Everyone was surprised for a bit, but started to forward it like crazy. Zhong Yi's fans forwarded it. Yao Jinsai forwarded it. Zhong Xia forwarded it. The married couple, Chen Guang and Fan Wenli, forwarded it. Ha Chichi forwarded it. Zhong Zhua forwarded it. Su Na forwarded it. The Voice's official Weibo account forwarded it. Central TV Department 1's official Weibo forwarded it. 10,000. 30,000. 50,000. 100,000. The number of times it was forwarded kept rising as the poem climbed up Weibo's trending topics in just a short time with an unstoppable force that would kill any gods or Buddhas in order to claim the top headline. Ho! W to describe the revered peak? Towering over all Shandong with endless green. Heavenly beautiful splendor nature gathered, the shaded north side cut off from the south side sheen. Clustering clouds cleanse the cracks in the heart, eyes strain watching homebound birds fly through the ravine. Someday I shall ascend your highest heights to see other summits dwarfed, and savor the scene. Chapter 687 Highly Sought After At Zhong Yi's parents' house. Zhong Yi was having lunch with his parents and Chen Chen in the living room when he received a call regarding the viewership ratings. Upon hearing the news, he was slightly stunned and then said, Oh, thanks for telling me. The person who called him was Little Wang from the program team. After hearing Zhong Yi's calm reply, she didn't know whether to laugh or cry, then said agitatedly, Director Zhong, the viewership rating is 2.01%. It's 2.01%. Zhong Yi said, I got it. Little Wang said, You're not satisfied with that. Zhong Yi said, No, I am very satisfied. Isn't this quite good? Little Wang said, Only quite good? This is already defying all common sense. You're really too awesome. It wasn't that Zhong Yi did not feel excited, but that this viewership rating was already within Zhong Yi's expectations when they started on the production of The Voice. The people from this world had not seen the charm and power of The Voice before and were unfamiliar with it since it was not within the market norms. Thus, many people did not have any expectations for The Voice from the very beginning or only had very low expectations for it. They felt that it would be pretty good if they could achieve 0.7% in the viewership ratings. If the viewership ratings hit 1%, it would be a surprise. But Zhong Yi was different, he knew the popularity of The Voice in his previous world. Hence, when the result of the viewership ratings achieve a score just over 2%, although Zhong Yi was surprised and felt very happy, his reaction was definitely not as great as others. After hanging up, his mother immediately asked, are the viewership ratings out yet? Zhong Yi acknowledged while smiling, the viewership ratings are 2.01%, still passable. Upon hearing that, his mother said with a slightly hoarse voice, my goodness. It broke 2%? His father did not quite understand, so he asked, is that very high or very low? Of course it's very high. His mother knew more about viewership ratings and continued, right now, the most popular variety show, which uses Korean copyrights, has only slightly more than 1% of the viewership ratings. His father nodded and said, then that's pretty good. His mother could not sit still any longer. She put down her chopsticks and said, I'm not eating anymore. I'm going to our neighbor's house for a while to tell them about the viewership ratings. His father said, are you going to brag and act cool again? His mother rolled her eyes and said, it's none of your business. Mom. Zhong Yi gave a wry smile and said, please eat your lunch first. I'm already full. His mother dressed up a little formally and went out immediately with a smile on her face. Zhong Yi shook his head, then picked up his chopsticks and hurriedly grabbed some food. I also have to eat quickly. There's probably going to be many calls coming and I'll have to answer them all. Indeed, just after Zhong Yi took his last bite and put down his chopsticks, the phone calls came in wave after wave. Zhong Er, you're awesome. It's not too bad. When will you be treating me? Whoa, we'll have to wait until I have finished with my work this quarter. Then we have reached an agreement. 
you definitely can't escape from treating me. Zhong Yi, you're getting even more popular now. Think about what you're saying. I've always been very popular. The viewership ratings have broken 2%, you're two face smacking. Some people's faces are all swollen now. Ha! Huh. Teacher Zhong, I'm from the Beijing Times. Can we ask you for an interview? Which day? Is today okay? Oh, these next two days will be difficult as I'm very busy. It's fine. Then we will interview you on another day based on your schedule. Oh right, I have to congratulate you first. Thank you. I finally got through. Teacher Zhong, your cell phone is even more difficult to get through to than a president's phone. Hi, it's only today that I'm getting so many calls. Usually, no one will contact me at all. Your new program is too awesome. You have made it so godly. It's not bad, right? You're really not being modest at all. Why should I be modest? It was within my calculations. Brother Zhong. Ari, CEO Wu. I just want to update you on something. I've just received news from various retail chains and sales channels that our Brain Gold product sales volume has been soaring off the charts. The exact data is not out yet and we'll have to wait until the end of this month or beginning of next month to find out, but the trend is already very obvious. Especially in these major cities and districts like Beijing and Shanghai, there was an exceptionally obvious increase in sales volume. It's even higher than what we estimated yesterday. That's good. Thank you, Teacher Zhong. Don't say that, I should be the one thanking you instead. If not for your investment on the title sponsorship, we would not have the money to make the voice into what it is now. It's because of your good planning that it worked. In the future, if there are such good opportunities again, you must not forget us. That's for sure. In the blink of an eye, he had already received more than a dozen calls. Some of the calls were from people at Central TV. Some were from his relatives. Some were from the newspaper reporters. And many were from Zhong Yi's friends. The calls lasted from 12 p.m. until 2 p.m. This was already the usual for Zhong Yi. He had already gotten used to it. As his circle continued growing with his rise in popularity, Zhong Yi got to know more and more people. Naturally, with such a big commotion, everyone would be guaranteed to call him up to congratulate him. After the calls were done, his father went to take his afternoon nap. Chen Chen kept holding onto Zhong Yi's mother's cell phone and playing games on it on the sofa. Zhong Yi shouted at her, don't play too long. Then, he went back into his room and switched on his computer to browse the internet. The internet was in an uproar. The industry was in an uproar. The media was in an uproar. The entire country was discussing the voice. In the past, Zhong Yi had also created many big issues and released numerous works like the Lecture on Dream of the Red Chamber at Peking University, Zhong Yi's talk show, Lecture Room, and his crosstalk. Among them, there were a few that hit the headlines while some others also received great response and created heated discussions. But now, when compared to The Voice, all of those issues were nothing. Zhong Yi had never gotten on the headlines so easily before. It was safe to say that this was the work that most people were paying attention to and the response to it was really too explosive. You couldn't begin to imagine it when four of the top ten topics on Weibo were related to The Voice. You couldn't even imagine it just by randomly checking the entertainment section of any forum. There, one out of every three posts wrote about The Voice. Zhong Yi's name was also brought up numerous times by the netizens and media. An unprecedented amount of discussions. An unprecedented level of popularity. For some programs to be considered phenomenal, they would have to be assessed first on the show's influence, and second on its viewership ratings. For many variety shows, after broadcasting its first episode, it would take some time to gather data on whether or not it had the makings to become a phenomenon, because viewership ratings needed to stabilize step by step while its popularity would have to increase bit by bit until the viewership ratings reached a certain level, and the attention that the citizens paid to the show reached a certain point would the program be confirmed by the industry as a phenomenal, variety show. This would then be the highest honor that a variety show could receive that would confirm its status. However, this was unnecessary for The Voice. The Voice no longer needed time to slowly build up or to depend upon its future performances. 
after only the first episode, the voice had already reached the level of a phenomenal variety show. Whether it was someone who had biased views against Zhong Yi or the industry insiders who did not like the voice, none of them could deny this reality. They had to accept the truth as it was. If the viewership ratings of a premiere episode could annihilate all the variety shows in the country, and not be proclaimed as a phenomenal variety show, then what program would still dare to be crowned with this title? The netizens were coming up with all sorts of theories. Zhong Yi is invincible. In the variety world, who can stop the voice? Zhong Yi has once again proven his ability to everyone. He's really unbeatable. Those television stations and industry insiders who doubted him are such jokes. I wonder where they disappeared to now. They haven't shown up since the viewership ratings were released. They definitely won't show themselves. Who would still dare to come out? Their faces have already turned green from the face smacking. 2.01% of the viewership ratings. And only turning green? This is more like being face smacked until they vomit blood. Even now, I am still in disbelief of the viewership ratings. How could it be so high? That's right. Just look at everyone forwarding that poem, admiring the mountains. It's already been forwarded tens of thousands of times and commented on hundreds of thousands of times. A few days ago, who would have thought that the voice of China could get such a viewership rating? Who could expect that Zhong Yi actually managed to achieve his lofty claims of someday I shall ascend your highest heights, to see other summits dwarfed, and savor the scene? To be honest, I can understand what those industry insiders are feeling. It's not that they are unprofessional, but just that Zhong Yi is too ridiculous. Meanwhile, in a meeting room at a certain television station, there were about a dozen people attending the meeting room. The atmosphere was heavy. Everyone was staring at the Thursday's variety show's viewership ratings ranking dazed. During the boycott of Zhong Yi, their television station had been the one who pushed for the most support. From the leaders to the program team heads, many of them were involved in the boycott of The Voice. They had condemned Zhong Yi for breaking the industry rules and disrupting the market prices as their television station had two programs that were affected by this when a few celebrities, rejected and broke their contracts to record the programs because they felt that the joining payment was too low. But now, those people who boycotted Zhong Yi could no longer muster up a word anymore. There was no way to boycott him at all. The voice had used its viewership ratings to tell those doubters that their joining payment was definitely worth its price. That it was worth the amount of the title sponsorship fee. Rather than 100 million renminbi for its title sponsorship fee, with the viewership ratings that they had, even if Zhong Yi asked for 150 million now, there would still be companies willing to purchase it. After a while, the silence was broken. A person said, everyone, let's discuss it. Everyone stayed silent. After a few moments, that person suddenly said, go and check Zhong Yi's contract with Central TV Department 1. How long is his contract duration? Is it a yearly contract or a program-based contract? A woman said in surprise, what do you mean? That leader said, if it is a program-based contract, then when Zhong Yi's contract with Central TV expires, see if we can get Zhong Yi to join us. A man smiled bitterly and said, it should be a yearly contract. Another staff member said, I heard from my friend working in Central TV saying that Zhong Yi has signed a one-year contract with Central TV. That leader said, there's no other way then. After saying that, he sighed and shook his head continuously. At that time, when Zhong Yi was suspended by Peking University because of the scolding incident, he was also featured on the news. Someone from the station had previously suggested that they should invite Zhong Yi to join them, but after some discussion by the station, it was not approved. But now, even if they wanted to poach Zhong Yi, they did not have a chance to do so. The other television stations also began to check out Zhong Yi's contract terms with Central TV toying with the idea of poaching him. The birth of the voice had tempted many of them. But after they found out that Zhong Yi's contract with Central TV was a yearly one, those television stations basically gave up on the idea of poaching him at all. They knew for sure that Central TV Department 1 would definitely not release him even if they paid the breach of contract fees for Zhong Yi. For a person who could produce a program that received over 2% of the viewership rating so effortlessly, who would not want him? Besides, he was very different from the other famous program planners. 
you could poach many famous program planners, but would still have to fully fit all the aspects of the program team and set up. There might be a chance that some segments or staff members who did not fit properly or gel well would cause some problems to occur in the end. But Zhong Yi was different, if they managed to poach Zhong Yi, it was equivalent to poaching an entire team of the program planner, executive director, and host. Just him alone would be equivalent to a whole team. Hence, who would not want him? Who would not feel tempted? From being the reason of a boycott in the industry to becoming highly sought after, this change in attitudes could not be any greater. Chapter 688 The Country Citizens Imitate That night, the voice of China's online video was officially uploaded. As Central TV Department 1 had already agreed on a contract with an online video hosting service, the project was initiated very quickly as they wanted to ride the momentum of the show's popularity. The online video hosting service website's team had finally gotten everything in working order overnight. At 7.30 p.m., The Voice's first episode had appeared on the website's main page at a prominent location together with an ad banner. This was also covertly a publicity campaign for The Voice to have an online channel of distribution. 1 million. 5 million. 10 million. Once the video was uploaded, the number of views kept increasing. Many of the Northern Drifters, one who stayed in rented apartments did not own a television set. Having found out about The Voice from short online video clips, they wanted to catch the full episode, which was the reason why the views on the video were increasing so quickly. Many of these younger people were savvy at using the internet. At this time, the popularity of The Voice continued on strongly. With every second that passed by, The Voice was creating history in the recent years of variety programs. This program had been pushed to the very top and Zhong Yi was also riding on the crest of this wave. However, there were also some side events occurring at the same time. At 8 p.m., Zhong Yi received a call from the program team's assistant director Ha Chichi. Ha Chichi, hello, director Zhong. Zhong Yi, sister Chi, what's the matter? Ha Chichi said, about that, an advertiser just contacted me, it's the executive from Dahua Hotel. He was requesting that you slow your reciting during the advertising messages segment from the second episode of The Voice On. Just a slight pause where you can clearly pronounce their hotel's name syllable by syllable. This doesn't apply to any of the other advertisers, they just hope that the words Beijing Diehua Hotel can be slowed down a little. Zhong Yi asked, why didn't he contact me directly? I don't know why either, perhaps he wasn't too comfortable speaking with you and just contacted me directly instead. I think he also contacted Central TV Department 1 and the station was thinking that you might really have spoken too fast, and that it wouldn't do justice to the advertisers. After all, they did spend money to purchase the advertising rights, so. Ha Chichi sounded a little hesitant. Zhong Yi said, did the station approve this already? Ha Chichi answered, not really, they did not say so directly. Zhong Yi determinedly responded, tell the executive at Dahua Hotel that I won't be slowing my speed. The future style of hosting in the voice also won't change. If they feel uncomfortable about it, they can come and look for me directly and talk about it. If that still doesn't work out, then we will refund them the advertising costs. Refund? Ha Chichi said with a hint of surprise, not expecting Zhong Yi to be so persistent. Zhong Yi confirmed that. Ha Chichi probed a little, but if the station says. Zhong Yi interrupted, it doesn't matter who says what. Sure then, I understand. Ha Chichi knew what had to be done from here. Zhong Yi was very stubborn and headstrong in his position on this matter. In the field of artistic performances, he'd always had his own principles to follow. To put it in Beijing jargon, he was very stiff. No matter what anyone said, he would not listen or change his mind. In his previous world's version of The Voice, Hua Xiao had been pressured by the program team leader and advertisers to slow down his reciting of the advertising messages several times to adhere to the requirements of the advertisers. That made The Voice have one less interesting point to look forward to. However, Zhong Yi was not ready to cave in on such matters, nor was there a need to do so. Hua Xiao was only a host on the program team of The Voice, and therefore did not have much authority in the decision-making process. He also did not have much fame as a celebrity before becoming the host of The Voice. But it was different for Zhong Yi, as he had come on board to The Voice as a B-list celebrity. 
his fame and reputation were already known by everyone. The key factor was that he was also the executive director and executive program planner, while also informally the executive producer of the program. He was in charge of the voice's overall planning and spending, so that would make him the highest up on the program team. Even the executive producer, Old Fu, had to step aside for him. Zhong Yi had no need to listen to anyone trying to give him instruction or making thoughtless comments. Past 8. After he got off the phone, a heated discussion about Zhong Yi's eloquent reciting skills suddenly began online. The topic had slowly shifted from talking about the program and the contestants to focusing on Zhong Yi. That reciting speed, how godly. Yeah, I was totally dumbfounded the first time I heard it. I get shocked every time I listen to it, how could he be so fast? Was it put together with the help of a computer? You're thinking too much, why don't you make one for us to listen to? Are those professional hosts all crazy like that? Is that something that all broadcasting hosts can do? I don't know. Right, I've never ever heard someone speak that fast before. Suddenly, the host of Beijing Television's Do You Remember, Dong Shanshan posted an audio clip. It turned out to be her trying to imitate Zhong Yi's advertising messages. I will not accept any gifts this year the only gift I will accept is brain gold I will not expect, there's no need to watch any TV shows this year the only TV show you need to watch is The Voice The Authentic Health Product The Attacking, The Authentic The Voice Welcome to the broadcast of The Voice of China brought to you exclusively by our title sponsor The Health Brain Products, In Health Products, Leader in Health Products, Brain Gold. The audio clip ended there and accompanying this was a message at the end of the post, I tried to recite a segment of it, but realized just how crazy that mouth of Zhong Yi's was. I couldn't do it, I totally couldn't copy it. Below were the comments from the netizens. Pfft. Our goddess is so funny. Teacher Shan Shan, you've already done well. Yeah, you said it very quickly too. Dong Shanshan replied with a smiley face, even if I said it fast, it's not as fast as Zhong Yi. The accuracy of my pronunciation is not good either. I've already tried it more than a dozen times, but I just can't get it right. My mind can keep up but not my mouth. At this time, Yao Jinsai also appeared. Old Yao came out and immediately announced, let me try, let me. After around two minutes, Yao Jinsai posted a video of himself, the background showing that he was at some hotel, probably with a film crew at some place for filming. The video was recorded in a hotel room and Yao Jinsai could be heard clearing his throat before he quickly recited, I will not accept except any, gifts this year, the only gift I will accept, is brain gold there's no need to watch any TV shows this year the only TV show you need to watch is The Voice The Authentic Health Product. The authentic The Voice welcome to the broadcast of The Voice of China brought to you exclusively by our title sponsor Ladder, Leader. He managed to spew the lines of the advertising messages carelessly and did it a little faster than Dong Shanshan, but also recited many wrong words. Many of old Yao's fans came to laugh at him. Ha ha. Teacher Yao, you really think you could do it? That was such an inferior version. Teacher Yao, give it some more effort. You were a professional crosstalk actor in the past after all. Don't all crosstalk actors learn speed recital? Yao Mi also teased her father by replying, Dad, you're the worst. He he. A depressed Yao Jinsai replied, I'm just a supporting character and don't depend on my wits and mouth, but that kid, Zhong Yi is a main character, so don't compare us like that. Suddenly, even Chen Guang partook in the imitation game. Ah, old Chen is here too. Whoa, dude, you shouldn't be disgracing yourself here, old Chen. Yeah, even a professional host and a crosstalk actor couldn't do it, so why do you think you can? Chen Guang's imitation was indeed a miserable one. His reciting speed was already slower than Zhong Yi's by two to three times, yet he still stuttered and made a lot of mistakes with the words. On top of that, he was even using a script to read from but could not recite it successfully even at his own speed. After he posted the audio clip, Chen Guang left a emoticon below it. When everyone heard Zhong Yi's recital of the advertising messages, they might have thought it would be difficult, but it was only after they tried for themselves that they realized this was not even about difficulty, this was already a speed that had exceeded mortals. Let me try too. I won't believe it, I'll give it a try too. Ha ha, count me in. Interesting, interesting. I feel like I could do it. 
it shouldn't be a problem for me either. Wait a bit for me, everyone. No one knew when or where it started, but everyone was already trying to copy Zhong Yi's advertising message online. I will not accept any gifts this year the only gift I will uh, accept is brain go gold. As long as they get Akak now, ledged by at least three coaches they'll win a 10,000 Yuan Music Dreams scholarship sponsored by Brain. We also give our thanks to Bei Beijing Dahua Hotel for sponsoring the accommodations for the coat, coat, co, aches of the voice of China. No one could say it as fluently as Zhong Yi. While there were those who could recite it fluently, they did it with a much slower speed, carefully reading out each and every word, and none these were done in a single breath. Then there were those who committed many mistakes when they increased their speed of reciting. Many of them thought they could do it, so they kept trying and trying until they nearly went crazy. Rather than reaching Zhong Yi's speed, most of them could not even hit half of his reciting speed. The person who did the best was a third-year student from Media College's broadcast major, a class junior to Zhong Yi. He managed to read the entire advertising message of about 200 words in 22.3 seconds taking a single breath in between. As for Zhong Yi? Zhong Yi did it in 14.7 seconds with a single breath. The difference was nearly 8 seconds. 8 seconds might seem to pass in the blink of an eye, but only an industry insider would know what this really meant. They were worlds apart. For there to be a difference of 8 seconds for 200 words, it could already be said that this was forever going to be an insurmountable divide. For such speed, even a difference of half a second would be a very large gap, let alone eight seconds. Who else? No one will stand a chance anymore. It's impossible. F asterisk asterisk K, it's too difficult. What kind of a mouth does that Zhong Yi have? I don't think anyone in the country, no, anyone in the world will be able to surpass that mouth of his, right? Yeah, even if it's those famous hosts overseas, they can't possibly read with that kind of speed. This is a technique that truly belongs to Zhong Yi alone. Within the industry, many hosts did not feel convinced. Unlike Dong Shanshan who posted an audio clip to imitate the advertising messages, they couldn't do the same. This was because Dong Shanshan and Zhong Yi were old classmates and had a good relationship. Even if she tried to rub some attention from off Zhong Yi to herself, it wasn't a big deal. But for them, as professionals and people who were not close to Zhong Yi, they needed to refrain from getting too close. They couldn't use him as an excuse to get some attention for themselves, so they could only secretly time themselves at home while attempting to recite the advertising messages. But just as expected, no one could achieve the level Zhong Yi had set. They couldn't even reach half of the level he had set. This was a result many did not expect. Perhaps they knew that their recital speeds could not possibly match up to Zhong Yi, but they couldn't have expected that they were off by so much. Having tested themselves, these hosts gradually gasped in amazement upon realizing the difference. This was really a show that could not be replicated whatsoever. Just based on the hosting style alone, whether at home or abroad, only Zhong Yi could do it. Chapter 689 The Show's Second Episode the next day, Zhong Yi left Chen Chen behind for his parents to take care of. He woke up, brushed his teeth and washed up, then had a light breakfast, before leaving for work. At Central TV. When he reached the office, a lot of people greeted him. Director Zhong. You're here? Good morning, Teacher Zhong. Your new show is really defying all common sense. When is the second episode going to start record? It's a great joy to watch. Director Zhong, when it's time for the recording of the second episode, remember to leave some seats for our program team, all right? We would like to attend too and hopefully learn something from your team. Director Zhong, the voice has become extremely popular now. The entire country is talking about you. Our program team will be starting a new program soon. Do you think it would be possible to help us cross-promote it on your show during the commercial break in the middle for 10 seconds? The commercial breaks in between your show are being sold by Central TV Department 1 for such a high price now that we can't even afford it if we wanted to. Do you think you could put in a word for us? 7 or 8 seconds is fine too. A bunch of people were greeting him, but Zhong Yi did not know most of them. Zhong Yi just smiled along. If anyone asked him for help, he would agree as long as it was a small matter. He finally got into the elevator and went upstairs to his program team office. 
when he entered the office, he could immediately hear the gathered staff chattering loudly. Little Wang laughed happily. How explosive, we're going to be famous. A female editor laughed. Director Jong's really too awesome. A viewership rating of 2.01%. You didn't see it, but I was working overtime in the office yesterday when the viewership ratings were released, and everyone in Central TV Department 1 was dumbfounded. All of them looked like they had seen a ghost. I don't even need to mention how satisfying that felt. A male editor said, a show no one was optimistic about had somehow leaped right to the top of the variety world. All of this still feels unreal to me. At this moment, everyone finally heard the footsteps. Ah, Director Zhong. Director Zhong is here. Everyone went over and congregated. Most of the staff had the day off yesterday, so even if they knew about the viewership immediately after it was released, they did not have the chance to discuss it since they were not at work together. Today, the first thing they did when they arrived was discuss this issue. There were far too much they needed to get off their chests as they were very astonished by the results. Now that they saw Zhong Yi, they had even more things that they wanted to say that would last three days and nights. It was impossible to express their excitement and emotions in any language at this moment, or perhaps, only the pet phrase which Chen Guang always used would be able to describe it, this was truly unbelievable. Zhong Yi smiled and said, did you all rest well yesterday? Wu Yi answered, I did not rest at all. Yep, yep. Little Wang said, after we heard about the viewership ratings, I was all perked up for the rest of the day. I couldn't fall asleep until three in the morning. The entire day felt like a dream to me. Zhong Yi was tickled at this. Then there's no choice, even if you guys did not rest well. Because the preparation work beforehand still wasn't enough due to being pressed for time, we still have to record the other contestants' intro clips. We'll have to jump back in with our engines running and get those intro clips done first. Then, depending on the time, we will record the blind auditions for episodes 2 and 3. As for how it will be arranged, that will depend on today's progress. It's best that we work fast so that we can record more episodes tomorrow. Yes. Got it. Understood, Director Jong. The mission will definitely be completed. Everyone's response was very loud and pumped full with energy. If the viewership ratings and viewer response were not good, their spirits would have taken a blow and they would not have the passion to work anymore. After all, people needed acknowledgement from society to feel a sense of self-worth, and now that the voice had leapt right to the top of the variety world, claiming the number one spot in recent years, they as a members of the Voices program team were full of spirit. They were now the top program team in the variety show industry, so their drive was also different. Without the need for Zhong Yi to say anything, everyone was even more enthusiastic than Zhong Yi the executive director. All of them just wanted the voice to do well. Number one in the industry. They had never had such glory in their lives before. Ha Chichi who arrived a little later and had just walked in, greeted, Ari, director Zhong, good morning. Zhong Yi turned around. Oh, you're here? How's the issue with Dahua Hotel? Do we have to refund them the cost? If they want, I will send someone to negotiate with them. Hachichi smiled and said, they won't ask for a refund. Oh. Zhong Yi said. Hachichi said, the executive of Dahua Hotel came to look for me again yesterday. It was already quite late and I was worried that you might be sleeping already, so I didn't update you. When they saw that there were many people imitating your advertising messages online, they realized that many of those people were trying very hard to get the lines memorized. The name of Dahua Hotel was plastered all over the internet and helped them get the maximum publicity they could receive. The executive told me that this was a very good advertising effect, and as of yesterday, the main branch, along with five other branches of their hotels, were fully booked till the next weekend. From that, I think they could even be thinking of adding more advertising lines and surely won't be asking for a refund. Zhong Yi nodded. Then that's good, it would be quite troublesome to handle if they really wanted a refund. We would still have to write the contracts and sign another advertiser. As long as the advertisements are effective and we do not let them down for supporting us since the beginning, it's good enough. As long as it did not require Zhong Yi to bend his artistic principles, it was for the best that all this turned out to be a win-win situation. 
If due to Zhong Yi reading the advertising messages too fast and thus contributing to a weaker effect of the ads, then Zhong Yi would definitely feel a little bad about it. Suddenly, the office telephone rang. Little Wang went to pick it up, hello, this is the Voices Program Team Office. It was Jiang Yuan's voice on the line, I'm Jiang Yuan. Is your director Zhong there yet? Little Wang quickly said, Director Zhong is already here. Okay, let him know that I want to see him in my office for a while. Jiang Yuan's tone carried a smile in it. She could hear that he was in a rather good mood. Little Wang hung up the phone and informed Zhong Yi, Director Jiang wants to see you. Zhong Yi nodded and went out to take the elevator up to Jiang Yuan's office. Dong Dong. He knocked on the door. Please come in. When he walked in, Jiang Yuan was currently drinking tea. Zhong Yi smiled and said, You are looking for me, leader? Jiang Yuan stood up and said, Come, take a seat. Having said this, he took a paper cup and asked, What would you like to drink? He was actually intending to personally pour a drink for Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi hurriedly went over to him to stop him. Don't, leader. I will help myself. Jiang Yuan did not insist. He said, you've really helped Central TV Department 1 save face this time. After watching the recording of the voice that day, I'd already felt that the viewership ratings would not be poor, but who could have thought that it would be this high? No one in the entire industry could have predicted such an outcome. Little Zhong, the credit is yours. Well done. You've done really well. Zhong Yi spoke a few humble words. Jiang Guan said, what do you all intend to do from here? Zhong Yi responded, we will be recording the second and third episodes tomorrow. Jiang Yuan thought about this for a moment, then said, I only have one worry right now. The response to the first episode was too good and the effects of the show were great as well, which are both good and bad things for the show. The good thing is that it loudly announced the branding of our show to everyone and helped the show quickly gain a market share. But the bad part is that it's likely the later episodes won't be able to do as well as the first one. After all, there aren't really that many good contestants and it will become harder to record a good episode later on. We're just afraid that the show will run out of steam and the episodes won't be shot as well as the first one, making the audience feel disappointed, thus making the viewership ratings slide accordingly. If the slide is too great, the branding created won't be guaranteed anymore and might just be a flash in the pan. Zhong Yi laughed, I've already considered that. We will definitely work hard to gain the satisfaction of the audience. Jiang Yuan asked, are you confident? Zhong Yi replied, more or less. All right then, I'll leave this to you. Hearing him say that, Jiang Yuan knew that Zhong Yi definitely had it all planned out already. I will be waiting to see the viewership ratings report about your second episode. Chapter 690 Controversy over the second episode's viewership. Two days later. The next morning. The recording studio was ready for the start of the second episode's recording of The Voice. Zhong Yi took some time and gathered all the staff backstage for a short and simple meeting. Today, we will record two episodes in a row, but if the conditions are good, we might add another episode in for recording to get the fourth episode out as well. The station's request of our program team has already been made clear to us. They don't request that our program get another record-breaking viewership rating but just hope for stability. As long as it is not lower than the first episode's viewership ratings, it is good enough. That is also my basic requirement I'm asking of all of you, so I hope that everyone can raise their spirits. Put your full concentration on working on the show today. Yes. No problem. Don't worry. For sure. Everyone agreed in unison. Zhong Yi gave the order. All right, let's go. Amidst all the hubbub, everyone got into their positions and went on standby. Today's workload was very heavy. Zhong Yi had already done the necessary preparations. Not only did he communicate in private with the four coaches for a long time beforehand, he also talked to the contestants who were going to appear today. He had to constantly shape the fundamental and presentation of the show to get it ever closer to the one he had envisioned in his mind. As the executive director, all these factors needed to be considered and he also had to be in full control of the entire program. Nothing could deviate from the plans. To be honest, Zhong Yi had rather heavy stress on him too. 
After getting off to a winning start and creating a viewership ratings legend, their starting point was pushed even higher now. The road from here was indeed going to be much more difficult, and as a result, Zhong Yi needed to spend more energy and effort to ensure that the show would not go downhill from here. As for whether they would still be able to set another record high viewership rating, this was not something Zhong Yi could predict anymore. He would leave this to fate. As long as he did his best to make sure the show was good, then everything else should be decided by the market and the audience. Online After the broadcast of The Voice's premiere episode a few days ago, the talk surrounding The Voice had been discussed less and less. This was a normal trend since no TV show had ever been discussed forever. There was always a peak and a cooling period. Besides, with so many entertainment activities and works in the entire country, such as that newly screened movie that had earned 500 million renminbi in the box office, a certain celebrity's divorce, all of that news was not missing from the entertainment circle. It wasn't possible that everyone would pay attention to you on a daily basis. In the face of so much entertainment news, the audience would surely be more attracted to something else each time. As a result, on Monday and Tuesday, any news of The Voice went by quietly and peacefully as many people were discussing a certain celebrity divorcing for the second time. When Wednesday came, the talk surrounding The Voice once again gathered momentum as everyone gradually picked up the discussions of the program once more. Why? Because the second episode of The Voice was going to be broadcast soon. On Weibo. I'm so looking forward to it. It's almost time for the second episode of The Voice. It has been so long. I've been waiting for almost a whole week already, thinking about it every day. It's finally going to be shown again. Me too. In the past, I didn't usually watch variety shows. Even if I did, I watched those subbed ones from Korea or America online. After all, their standards and quality are truly better, but the voice has pulled me back to sitting in front of my TV and instilled confidence back in me regarding our domestically produced variety shows. In the future, I would dare to thump my chest with pride and say that we also have good domestic variety shows. I can't wait either. Come quickly, episode 2. Do you guys think it will create another viewership ratings record? How suspenseful. Yeah, after all, the first episode was totally logic-defying, so it's not going to be easy for the second episode to do it. For some programs that began without getting much attention due to the promotions not reaching the market, they would be able to slowly increase their viewership ratings and do better with each episode as long as they maintain the program's quality. Do You Remember is an example of such a program, but The Voice has already penetrated too deeply into the market, and has 2.01% of the viewership ratings with its premiere episode. Usually, for these kinds of shows, the later episodes don't usually perform too well. It's likely to fall below 2%. But no matter how far far it falls, the voice still won't get too low a viewership rating. That's for sure. Zhong Yi is already a veteran of program planning in the television industry. With him around, even if the show is dropping, it won't be that bad. I don't feel that the voice's viewership ratings will necessarily drop. The key now is whether there will still be any exciting contestants for the blind audition segment. If they can still get contestants like Luo Yu and Qian Pingfan, then the viewership ratings definitely won't drop. There aren't many contestants like them out there. Not many? More like they're totally rare, don't you think? It all boils down to the quality of the second episode's contestants now. Yes. For a lot of the talent shows out there, their premiere episodes usually do well in the viewership ratings but will always drop in the later episodes. This sort of show is too commonly seen, so I'm just afraid that the voice will also follow in their footsteps. I actually do like this show a lot and is the only variety show I'm following right now, so it better stay strong. If the quality of the show drops too much, then I will have no variety shows to watch anymore. The netizens were all discussing fervently, talking about all kinds of things. Similarly, peers from the industry had also turned their focus on this subject. Central TV Department 1 was the most anxious and pressured party. They had invited Zhong Yi to join them because they wanted to regain their leading status within the variety show industry. Now that Zhong Yi, along with The Voice's first episode, had blinded the entire country with a glowing reception, it had made many of the leaders at Central TV Department 1 very excited, while simultaneously worried that they would lose what they had gained. 
they knew that what they had so far was still not enough to cement their return to the top of the variety world as no variety show would be judged on just one of its episodes. What they needed was the average viewership rating to be good, so even if the first episode's ratings had defied all logic, if the later episodes did not do well, it still wouldn't mean that Central TV had made a comeback. It all still hinged on the performance of the show's entire season, so with huge expectations of The Voice, they naturally had more worries as well. Everything depended on if Zhong Yi could keep the viewership ratings stable. As for the other television stations, they had the same thoughts. Some of industry insiders were taking a more objective view on The Voice. Taking the lead was easy, but holding on to it will prove difficult. Yes, it's going to be a real test of Zhong Yi's ability now. The first big problem has arrived for The Voice. Let's see if Zhong Yi is able to get past this. I don't have much hope in this case. Let's see how it goes in the second episode. Along with many peers from the television industry, their views were more pessimistic, or rather some of these people were simply waiting for Zhong Yi and The Voice to become the joke. A few of them posted their views on Weibo. The first episode's viewership ratings were too much of a fluke. I think so too. It might have happened for the first episode, but that doesn't mean the second and third episodes will be the same. The Voice's first episode has seriously overpenetrated into the market, so what comes after will only weaken for sure. I advise everyone not to have too high an expectation that the second episode of The Voice will be like what you all might think it might be. My prediction for the second episode's viewership ratings is only 1.3% or so. This figure is much closer to the norm of a popular program in the variety industry. The two-point rating it received for the first episode was way too out of the norm. When Zhong Yi claimed he wanted to see other summits dwarfed and savor the scene, that was only applicable to the first episode. It's impossible that every episode will have similar viewership ratings, so don't enshrine Zhong Yi as legendary. Legends don't last a lifetime. Those who had made these claims were mainly the same industry insiders who had previously boycotted Zhong Yi. After the viewership ratings of the first episode were released, they were all left speechless and dumbfounded. At that point in time, none of them stepped forward to say a word, but now that the attention on the first episode of The Voice had passed and with the second episode coming up soon, they timed the opportunity to make their stand known. All of this was for nothing more than to try to regain their face. After all, they didn't want to lose too badly. Moreover, they were honestly convinced that Zhong Yi and The Voice would not be able to stay that strong forever. Chapter 691 Broadcast Thursday Night Around 8.55 p.m. At Zhong Yi's parents' house, his mother was in the kitchen preparing supper. She was frying some sausages one and chopping the garlic, occasionally coming out to the living room to ask, has it started yet? Zhong Yi answered, not yet, there's still five minutes. His mother asked, it's still the commercials? They're taking too long with that. His father urged, just get the sausages onto the dining table first, Chen Chen is getting hungry waiting for you. Right away, right away. Not a moment later, his mother brought out the dish and put it onto the dining table. Chen Chen, come and eat, try the sausages that grandma fried. Chen Chen went to the dining table and picked up a pair of chopsticks immediately. John Yi stopped her. Have you thanked grandma for cooking this for you yet? Chen Chen raised her head. Thank you, grandma. His mother smiled happily. No need to thank me, just eat. Only then did Zhong Yi let Chen Chen start eating. He himself also started eating, but he used his hands instead of chopsticks. The sausages were still very hot and he even let out a yell because of that. Then he dipped it into the garlic sauce and threw it directly into his mouth. Then Chen Chen did not take the sausages from her plate but insisted on snatching them from Zhong Yi's hands. Give me, Zhong Yi, give me. No, dip it in the sauce yourself. Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. His mother sat down. Why are you fighting with a child? Come, Chen Chen, let grandma dip it in some sauce for you. Do you want vinegar too? His father turned the volume of the TV up. On screen, the second episode of The Voice was starting. Simultaneously, the same event was also occurring in many households across the country. In a household. Honey, get me a cold beer. Drinking again? The Voice is starting, I've already been waiting for a week. In an alley. 
brother son, you're leaving so early? Why don't we play another two rounds? I'm not playing anymore, you guys continue. I have to go back to catch the voice. Whoa, you already passed 40 and still watching talent shows? What do you all know? The voice is different, it's really fun to watch. At some kebab restaurant. Waiter. Coming. Please switch the television to the voice. Sure, sir. Give me another 50 kebab skewers and 5 bottles of beer, cold ones. They'll be here soon. Millions of viewers were already waiting in front of their televisions, their eyes focused on Central TV Department 1's channel. Everyone wanted to know if the second episode of The Voice would be able to continue its miraculous run, and if John Yee's viewership ratings legend was really just a flash in the pan. In the past two days, a few on online comments were rather spot on. The real test of John Yee's standard and The Voice was starting just today. Whether they were a mule or a horse all depended on this second episode. The introduction music played. The logo of The Voice appeared. During the first episode, there was a lot more fanfare, such as the opening theme song and coach's introduction. A lot of the viewing audience thought that it would be the same for the second episode, but what surprised them was that The Voice did not follow the templates of other talent shows. Instead, there wasn't even an opening introduction. In place of it was the fan favorite advertising segment. When the show started, the focus was immediately on the stage. Zhong Yi had already walked up to the hanging microphone. He recited speedily while looking into the camera, I will not accept any gifts this year the only gift I will accept is brain gold there's no need to watch any TV shows this year, the only TV show you need to watch is The Voice. A string of advertising messages seemingly flew out from his mouth. The loud applause from the audience thundered through the entire studio. Online, many people who heard this again could only come up with forced smiles. Just how did Zhong Yi do it so quickly? Was he aiming to break the speed of sound there? Each time I listen to it, I get more surprised. That mouth of his is really too godly. Damn, Zhong Yi has gotten faster again. I timed it just now and Zhong Yi's recital of the advertising message today was faster than the first episode's recital by zero. Five seconds. F asterisk asterisk K, he could even go faster than before? He did not even hit his limit yet in the first episode? Still increasing his recital speed? I'm gonna faint. Are you sure? I timed it too. Indeed, he did it faster than before. My timing shows that he was faster by 0.4 seconds. Heavens! Teacher Jong's taking this godly speed to the next level. He's just so godlike. With a godly mouth too. Teacher Jong, you're too awesome. The opening advertising messages had already made many of the audience members erupt into excitement. Many of the industry insiders who saw this all felt that Zhong Yi and the voice were being too violent. Why violent? Because whenever all the other variety shows wished to pull up their viewership ratings by attracting viewers, they would have to try many tricks and strategies, like finding a better pool of contestants, inviting a well-known coach, or giving more thought when creating new ideas for the program and even by relying on the humor of the host. However, the voice's advertising segment that pulled in the viewers only needed to depend on Zhong Yi's amazingly fast recital speed which would crush all of his fellow peers. It violently relied on Zhong Yi's individual ability to pull in all the viewers' interest, and this seemingly non-technical ability actually required the most technique to execute. Right now, everyone knew that if they delivered the advertising messages in such a manner, it would definitely raise the viewership ratings by attracting enormous attention and hype to the topic. But even if they knew, there was no host in the industry who could do the same thing. So looking at Zhong Yi continuing to use his unique skill in the second episode of the program, many of the satellite channel industry insiders could only watch and sigh. Unless they could somehow poach Zhong Yi over from Central TV Department 1, they could only watch with envy. Excitement rose in the air. The next moment, Zhong Yi started to introduce the first contestant who would come up on stage. The show's pacing was very fast. There were no slow moments as it headed straight for the main event. The contestant's intro clip started playing. It was a woman's voice. Since childhood, my family's living conditions have always been good. My parents are rather strict with me, so I can't do many things. When I went to work, it was also at my parents' company. 
I know that they wish to nurture me so I can take over the company in the future and have achievements in the business world, but to be honest, that's not what I like. I don't like doing business where people are always scheming against each other. I like to sing, and I want to sing. That's why I've come to the stage of the voice. I hope to tell my parents that I will choose my own path. The female contestant carried the microphone and stepped on stage. The moment she appeared up on stage, whether it was the live audience or the viewers in front of their TVs, everyone showed slightly shocked expressions. Why? Because of this contestant's appearance. How beautiful. Damn, a beauty. This person is too beautiful, too beautiful. She carries herself really well. F asterisk asterisk K, I've always thought that the voice would only have ugly men and women as contestants. Where did a person with such stunning looks come out from? I thought that the voice doesn't care about looks. Yeah, I am also quite disappointed. Could it be that the voice has already conceded to the traditional format from the second episode? They are going to become just like any other talent show that uses good-looking people as their contestants. And I still thought that the voice was something new and refreshing. If this contestant only performs averagely, I will not be watching the voice anymore. Listen to the performance first. Many netizens were commenting online while watching the program. As the contestants from the first episode had left a very deep impression on them, many of them already formed preconceived notions of the contestants. Now that such a beautiful-looking female contestant had appeared on stage, they felt a little unused to it. The female contestant's name was Yuan Tong and had moved Zhong Yi with the song Blooming during the preliminary auditions, allowing her to qualify for the next round. However, as another female contestant had performed the same song in the first episode, to avoid repetition, the music arrangement teacher and music director had chosen another song for her after consulting Zhong Yi. It wasn't a love song nor an upbeat song. It was a song that carried some risk if performed in a singing competition as it didn't fit too well to the theme. However, Zhong Yi and his team all believed that Yuan Tong could make it sound good. The song was, For My Future Son or Daughter. I want a child. I'll teach M how write and speak. I want a child. I'll teach M to be thoughtful and free. I want a child. I'll teach M forgiveness and mercy. I want a child. I'll teach M to be selfless and true. After this female contestant opened her mouth to sing, everyone immediately stopped what they were saying. An uproar broke out again online. What the f asterisk asterisk k? That's frigging nice to listen to. This, this singing is too good. F asterisk asterisk K, who says that if you look good, you won't be able to sing. I was nearly misled by you guys. She can also sing very well even if she's beautiful. Ahem, I take back my words from earlier. It was because of the first episode that I assumed the wrong things. I did not think that there would be any good looking people appearing on this stage. This person sings as well as Luo Yu. She must also be a key contestant. And she's even very pretty. The voice did great. How did they manage to find so many awesome people? At this moment, on the TV screens, Chen Guang and Fan Wenli both pressed the button simultaneously as they both turned around with excitement. They've turned. There's still two more coaches to go. Ha ha ha, how wonderful. Wow, look at old Chen's eyes. They're gleaming at the sight of a pretty lady, heh? Zhang Xia looks like she's hesitating, I think she'll turn around soon. Yuan Tong was still singing. There was no high notes to hit nor any showy techniques. She simply used a very emotional style of singing to perform this song, or rather she was just singing her feelings. Through this song's beseeching of one's future child, she was actually reflecting on her own experiences for the past 20 years of her life. It was performed very well and full of charm. Um, my daughter. My son. I don't want you to be like me, bad with words. I don't want you to be like me, selfish, harsh, and untoward. I don't want you to be like me, showing off your vanity. I don't want you to be like me. Zhong Yuanqi turned. Zhong Xia glanced sideways and also determinedly hit the button. All of them had turned. It was another rare occasion where a contestant earned the approval of the four coaches. The audience also exploded as everyone started cheering for Yuan Tong, for her beauty and for her singing. 
Backstage at the second recording studio site, Zhang Yi was accompanied by Yuan Tong's parents who did not look like they were too interested, appearing quite obviously unsupportive of their daughter. But when they saw their daughter's eyes had teared up at the most emotional part of the song, then saw how the four coaches were reacting excited due to her singing, as well as the studio audience's cheers, Yuan Tong's mother's eyes reddened. She quietly wiped away some tears from the corners of her eyes and looked at her husband who had raised his arms high in encouragement of their daughter. Yuan Tong was crying. When she reached the final verse of the song, as her vibrato ended along with the music, she saw that the four coaches had all turned around. Suddenly, at that moment, she could not hold her emotions in any more and covered her mouth and cried. Having held it in for so long, with so many people watching her at the venue, she would naturally be a little more sensitive and so her tears started falling. Seeing this, Zhongxia also teared up a little. Perhaps she was also reminded of some memory since she looked to be in a rather complex state. Chen Guang still stuck to his old pet phrase as he raised both his arms. This is truly unbelievable. A stunning face. An experienced singing technique. A touching voice. With Yuan Tong's appearance, the entire stage was lit up again. The netizens all shouted in succession. The singing was too wonderful. I nearly cried listening to that. Me too. I'm already a fan. Yuan Tong is awesome. Supporting you in wanting to walk your own path. Right, don't go into business. You must carry on singing. It's your life, so you must make your own choice. The several industry insiders suddenly went quiet. One of them was the executive director of a talent show that was on another satellite channel in the same broadcast time slot. He could only silently sigh, knowing that he and many others had been totally underestimating Zhong Yi. When the voice was not yet broadcast, they'd already been denouncing it and calling it bad. Many of them were not actually trying to badmouth it because it was a competitor, they wouldn't stoop that low. The main reason they had done so was because they truly did not believe that a talent show without any good-looking people could get popular. They felt that this was going against the market trends, but the first episode of The Voice had utterly schooled them regarding this concern. Zhong Yi had made a show that did not have any good-looking people in it and created a viewership rating miracle, shocking all his industry peers and shutting up all those doubters. And today, Zhong Yi had once again schooled these industry peers with another lesson. Who said that the voice would not have any good-looking people on it? Who had set such a rule? No one did. Zhong Yi did not mention this explicitly before either. He only said that the contestants could join regardless of looks. If they could sing very well and also have a very good-looking appearance, then that would be all the better. Just like how Yuan Tong was a contestant you wouldn't just find anywhere even if you looked hard. The future development path of Yuan Tong was probably going to be much smoother than Luo Yu or Qian Pingfan, since her foundation was almost perfect and she also had the necessary good qualities. When there was a misconception that the voice would only have ugly people joining as contestants, it was all because the audience had wanted to believe it that way. They had a wrong understanding of the voice and today's first contestant Zhong Yi sent on stage was clearly set up for this. Zhong Yi had his own considerations, and as expected, Yuan Tong had amazed the entire venue and put across a message of truth to everyone. Don't ever use your understanding to measure the voice. At Zhong Yi's parents' place. His mother's eyes lit up. This person is really beautiful and she sings very well too. Zhong Yi laughed. Yes, Yuan Tong was one of my designated trump cards from the preliminary auditions. I had planned for her to appear in the second episode to shock everyone. His mother said, what is she like? All right I suppose. Do you mean her personality? Zhong Yi asked. His mother asked with concern, yes, is her personality good? Zhong Yi threw up his hands. We've only talked a little about music and didn't have much contact after that, so I don't really know. But I guess she's all right, she seems to be quite filial. Eh, hey, why are you asking about this? His father had already sensed it. Your mom is just worrying about finding you a partner. His mother immediately said, yes. This girl is very beautiful and can even sing well. Her family is rather well off too, and although she might not be famous yet, she can slowly work her way up. I think she would match you well. Zhong Yi nearly fainted. Mom, didn't I tell you not to worry about this matter? 
his mother pouted. If you don't want me to worry, then you should find someone. I know that many people in the entertainment circle wed late in their lives, some are even still single in their forties, so you better make sure you don't learn from them. Just don't worry so much. Yuan Tong is just considered as an average beauty. Zhong Yi said, my future wife will definitely be much more beautiful than her. Chen Chen who was sitting next to them on the sofa glanced at him for a moment. Ha ha. His mother doubtfully said, is that so? Zhong Yi laughed. Of course, just wait and see. He was actually speaking the truth, since Wu Ziqing was indeed much more beautiful than Yuan Tong. Perhaps, since Zhong Yi had seen Wu Ziqing so many times, he did not even take much notice of Yuan Tong from the beginning. He basically did not have any interest in her and it was just his mother who had brought it up and incoherently connected them together, thinking that her son was still unable to find someone. His father interrupted, don't talk anymore, it's the next contestant's turn. His father was never interested in watching such shows in the first place, neither could he really understand them, but maybe due to his son, he enjoyed it quite a bit. If anyone spoke loudly, he would say that they bothered his watching of the show. His mother turned her attention back to the television and did not raise the subject of Zhong Yi finding a partner anymore. She asked anxiously, who's next? Is it a man or a woman? Is the performance good? Zhong Yi smiled and kept them guessing. The next contestant will surely give both of you a great fright. Just watch, I won't spoil it for you. Chapter 693, Grandpa, could you cut it out? At a quarter past 9 p.m., the next contestant was about to appear. Having been enticed by Zhong Yi with his description of the contestant, his parents kept their eyes on the TV screen and anticipated who would come next. They wanted to know just how frightening this next contestant would be. Even Chen Chen who was still eating the sausages glanced curiously at the screen. But at this moment, Zhong Yi stood up from his chair. After filling his stomach, he took a napkin and wiped the garlic sauce and oil from his hand. He then went back into his room. He took out his phone and hesitated for a long while but still decided to call the number that was written on a note he had kept in his pocket. He had gotten this from the program team. It was an emergency contact number one of the contestants had put on their application form. He dialed the number. Do do, the call went through. Zhong Yi greeted, hello. It was a middle-aged man-man who answered the phone, hello, who is this? Is this Mr. Ju? Zhong Yi asked. That's he, you are? The middle-aged man asked, wondering what was going on. Zhong Yi said, are you and your mother together at the moment? I would like to look for Grandma Wang. I'm not sure if it's convenient for her to an. Swear the phone right now? The middle-aged man said, looking for my mother? Are you a comrade from the residence committee? Or the retirees association? Maybe it was because of Zhong Yi speaking very formally, the middle-aged man did not make much of it and wasn't too suspecting. Okay, please wait, I'll get her. Then a voice could be heard, mother, mother, a call for you. About five or so seconds later, someone answered. It was a little old granny's voice, hello, is this little Li from the committee? Zhong Yi said, no, Grandma Wang, my name is Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi? Grandma Wang said while shaking her head. Did you get the wrong number? Zhong Yi said, I didn't get the wrong number. I understand that you might not know me, but I'm calling you with a rather presumptuous request. Could I get you to tune into Central TV Department 1's channel on TV? Grandma Wang did not understand. Eh? Zhong Yi said, you'll understand when you see it. After saying that, Zhong Yi hung up because he did not know what else to say. He also didn't know if he should be the one to say it, so he just hurriedly and briefly said a few words. On the other end. Grandma Wang was feeling very confused. Who was that? Her son, Mr. Ju, said in surprise, you don't know that person? I don't know him. He only asked me to take a look at Central TV Department 1's channel now and then hung up after saying that. Grandma Wang's television was on at the moment, but she was currently watching opera. She very much so enjoyed listening to opera. Mr. Ju was quite speechless at that. What did he mean by that? Was it a sales call? A phone scam? Grandma Wang said, I don't know. 
What's there on Central TV Department 1? Oh, it's Thursday today, isn't it? I think it's the voice of China at this time. Many of my colleagues have been telling me how good it is. Hey, wait. Mr. Ju suddenly said, what was the name of the person who called just now? Grandma Wang thought for a moment. He said he was, Zhong Yi? Mr. Ju was stunned. Isn't Zhong Yi that host? I think he joined Central TV Department 1 and the voice seems to be produced by him. Host? Grandma Wang thought, but she did not know any celebrities in person. Mr. Ju was feeling very curious, so he switched over to Central TV Department 1. Look, it's really the voice. I think it just started not too long ago. Could it really be Zhong Yi who called? That's not possible, he's such a superstar, why would he call our house? Just thinking about that seems impossible already. This is really weird. Grandma Wang said, if it's a scam, then just ignore it. I want to continue watching my opera. Can you watch the opera in a while? Let me take a look first. Mr. Ju wondered about what kind of program the voice actually was. This show is very popular right now. Everyone in the country is talking about it. The viewership ratings have won hands down against all other variety shows in the same period. They also say that the contestants are all very good performers too. My colleagues told me that there was a bicycle repairman in the first episode who sang with an even more womanly voice than a woman could. That voice was really the best. Then there was another contestant, ah. As he related to this part, he suddenly cried out in surprise. The words that were coming out from his mouth became stuck in his throat. Grandma Wang asked, what's the matter? Mr. Ju was shocked as he pointed at the television screen. His hand was trembling. F father. It's my father. What? Grandma Wang's expression also turned to shock. She turned her focus to the television and stared hard at it. Her eyes swirled with a complex mix of emotions. Mr. Ju, who seemingly had seen a ghost, said, What's my father doing on TV? Grandma Wang was silent for a moment, then uttered, Change the channel. Mother. Mr. Ju said. Change the channel. Grandma Wang said firmly. Mr. Ju said, Why do you want to change it? Just watch it. You've already divorced my father for seven or eight years years already. Each time he calls, you always hang up on him. Every time he comes to look for you, you don't even want to open the door for him. Whenever any of our neighbors mention my father's name, you will give them an angry look. Just what are you trying to do? It's not like my father has done something wrong. All he likes is singing, so why can't you get over that after all these years? Grandma Wang said angrily, is that what he calls liking singing? He treats singing like it's his life. When we were still young, your father would carry that guitar of his around every day and form whatever band or groups with his co-workers. If you say that he was young at that time, I'll let it pass, but as we got older, he still did not change. After working at the factory for 20, 30 years, just because he wanted to pursue that dream of his, he took the golden handshake at work and left his job. All the golden handshake payment was good for was a few years of insurance payments, and he was left with no other income. It's not like you don't know how much our family suffered during those years. Mr. Ju said, that still didn't warrant getting a divorce from my father, did it? Grandma Wang resolutely said, when he sang during his younger days, it was fine. But he's already so old, yet he still keeps on thinking about that dream. Everyone has their destiny, and his is a worker. Why does he still not give up at his age? Does he not understand? Only young people go on talent shows, what is he thinking stepping in and joining in on the fun? That singing of his is so terrible, who would like it? Mr. Ju seed, if you don't want to watch, I will. I have never really heard my father singing a song before. Every time he tried to sing in the past, you would always pick a quarrel with him. Grandma Wang scolded very harshly, but did not actually move from her seat. She remained on the sofa and her gaze was still on the TV set. Online. Many of the viewers were also raising a ruckus. I'm gonna faint. I'm gonna faint plus one. This, this. F asterisk asterisk K me, why is there even an old man? I'm blind. 
Your sister. The composition of the contestants in the voice is way too complicated. There's a train driver, a PE. Teacher, a bicycle repairman, and now even a retiree? Teacher Jong, I bow to you. Pfft. Does it need to be this funny? At that age, he still wants to join a talent show. This grandpa is really courageous, he can still sing at that age? Surely this must just be meeting the requirement of the number of contestants, right? Could he be intending to perform a square dance? 1. https forward slash forward slash en dot wikipedia dot org or wiki a square underscore dancing underscore China. The viewers in front of their TV sets found it both laughable and pitiful. They'd seen strange things, but never had they seen something this strange. A 60-year-old still coming to take part in a talent show competition? And it's even a singing competition? In all the other singing shows, even a 40-year-old would be rare and would be considered an overaged contestant. They were all basically just contestants who would end up having that one appearance in the competition before getting eliminated. After all, people at that age really weren't in the condition for singing, not to mention what it would be like for a 60-year-old grandpa. Would you cut it out? Grandpa, could you please cut it out? Chapter 694, Judanian. Judanian. The contestant's intro clip played, a 60-year-old grandpa appeared on screen. My name is Jew Danian, everyone just calls me old Jew. About my life, I've really been a failure. When I was young, my dream was to be a singer. Even after many decades, my dream never changed. Many of my friends say that I must be mad, criticizing that I'm not mature and even my spouse who had been part of my life for many years filed for a divorce seven, eight years ago over my pursuit of my dream. She said that I couldn't recognize what was real and what was a dream. She said that people our age shouldn't be qualified to dream anymore. But I will never believe that, why is it that only young people have the right to pursue their dreams? Why can't we old people also have a lifetime dream that we've been working with determination toward? I came to this stage today in hopes that my ex-wife and son can see me, that my ex-bandmates whom I had been playing music together with for so many years but given up now can see me, that those who tell me that I should not have such dreams can see me. I want to tell them that even though I might not turn out to be a capable singer, and I may have been wrong all my life, but I, Judanian, have never given up. From my 20s to my 60s, I've been pushing forward for 40 years, working hard for 40 years, but I have never given up. The audience was taken by surprise. 60 years old? He's really that old? F asterisk asterisk K, I just thought this man looked old. This is making me dizzy. He's already 60? Even the industry insiders who were watching The Voice were feeling a genuine sense of powerlessness. They could not understand what Zhong Yi was trying to do. How did he even manage to get an old man like this from the preliminary auditions? The four coaches appeared on screen looking a little lost, unsure of why the audience was so surprised. As only the four of them had their backs facing to the stage, they couldn't see the contestants or know if they were a man or a woman, how tall they were, their looks, or age. They were totally clueless. At Grandma Wang's house. Mr. Ju drew a deep breath. Mother, my father, he. Grandma Wang stayed silent. In the past, Mr. Ju also could not understand his father. He felt that the reason why his family had come to this point was due to his parents' unrealistic dreams and aspirations. His parents argued very often and even ended up divorcing. Although he did not say it explicitly, he had always blamed his father for this, thinking that it was because his father had handled everything wrong. But now, after listening to his father's intro clip, Mr. Ju was suddenly at a loss for words. On screen. Under the gaze of the countless TV viewers, Ju Danian stepped up onto the stage. He held the microphone in his hand and walked up in a slow manner. He even had to climb the stairs one step at a time, unable to go two steps at once. From this, it could be seen that Ju Danian was really getting old and no longer as strong as a younger person. Can this grandpa really do it? This old man could really sing? Everyone had the same question on their mind. The lights dimmed. 3, 2, 1, the music blared. It was the strumming of guitars. Even though the melody sounded a little different, it was still very familiar. Those who heard it immediately knew that this was the tune of an early rock song by Zhong Yuanqi that was very popular. 
a lot of people had sung it before, but never had they heard an old man singing it. It's I don't believe. Rock? Heavens! The grandpa is going to sing a rock song? What is this, just what is going on here? I was expecting a song from the 70s, how did it turn out to be a rock song? A person that age can also sing such a mainstream pop song? Will that work? It's definitely not going to be good on the ears. I have no clue what to say. It can't possibly be good, can it? He even got divorced because of this? That's really not worth it. If he sang an old song, it would be fine. But a rock song? You were already on the wrong path in the first place, yet you persisted for 40 years? What's the point of that? Rock essentially belongs to the younger people. On screen, Judanian was faced with the doubtful looks of the audience but did not seem to care. He had already long since gotten used to it, as he had been through all this countless times. Under the gaze of all these doubtful looks, he raised the microphone to his mouth and expressed all his experiences and emotions into the singing of the song. This was a song that he wanted to sing for himself. He opened his mouth. His voice came out. After all the effort, all I could do was return in failure. After all the fighting, all I could do was cry wishing for my dreams. After all the thinking, why is my life so lowly? After all the lamenting, why is my voice turning haggard? One year. After another. Yet another year. Year by year, he grew older. Year by year, he became more bleary-eyed. Judanian was just like how the lyrics were written, he had never had any success in his lifetime before. The television audience suddenly fell silent. At the live venue of The Voice, it also suddenly became quiet. Many people were so surprised that their mouths could not stay closed. They were all shocked by that mature and gravelly bass voice. They simply could not believe their hearing that this voice was coming out from the mouth of a 60-year-old man. Likewise, Judanian's son was also shocked at this. Both his eyes were staring wide at the television and he could not even speak coherently anymore. This, my dad, this. Grandma Wang was looking at her ex-husband on TV, as memories flashed in front of her eyes. How old are you already? I don't want to just give up like that. What's wrong with you? Can't you just accept your fate? I won't give in. Even if you don't accept, you still have to accept. Just spend our days peacefully and stop harping about your dreams. I've only had this one dream in my lifetime, can't you just support me for once? I've had enough. We're going to get a divorce. Xiao Yun. Let me try again. Let me try it for the last time. I can do it for sure. Don't say any more. It doesn't matter how many times you try it. That is not the life you were meant for. Suddenly, right after Ju Danian's bassy voice took a breath, he screamed in a high-pitched voice, with the power of a bomb exploding. I don't believe that my life is worse than others. I don't believe that my luck is worse than others. I don't believe that my path is always tough. I don't believe that my dreams will never come true. The screaming got higher and higher pitched. Inflaming every household that was tuned in on their televisions. It was too explosive. I don't believe that my life is worse than others. I don't believe that I have no talent. I don't believe that I'm destined to be a lowly person. I don't believe that my songs will be left unanswered forever. The coaches could not longer hold themselves back anymore. Zhang Yuanqi turned. Zhang Xia turned. Chen Guang turned. Fan Wenli turned. The four coaches all hit their buttons and turned around within one second of each other. If a voice like that could not earn their approval, then nothing would. However, when they saw the contestant, the four coaches all broke down. Fan Wenli screamed, ah. Zhang Xia also had a fright. Ayo, my god. Zhang Yuanqi said, it's a grandpa? Chen Guang held his head in his hands, looking like he couldn't accept it. Holy shit. When they were listening to this voice with the backs facing the stage, they could hear that the contestant had some age and life experience from the way he sang with his mature and gravelly voice. But even so, it only sounded like a 40-year-old or so, not 60 or above. Who would have thought that it would be an old man? What they saw had truly given the four coaches a shock. 
This was really just too surprising. This person sang so well. If anyone told them that they were listening to a 60-year-old grandpa perform when their backs were turned, they would never have believed it. Besides, this was a rock song. The power required in a rock song, the soul and emotions, all of these were expressed fully by the old man. Everyone who heard it could feel their blood boiling with excitement. Heavens! 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 Holy shit! How awesome! That was such a strong performance. This grandpa is so damn cool. Ah! Uh, I've got goosebumps all over my body. How cool! This grandpa is really too awesome. F asterisk CK me, how did he sing it so well? His vocals seem to be even more aggressive than a young man. Is he really a 60 year old grandpa? Now it feels more like he's just 16. Awesome. The voice is awesome. This stage is too attractive. This is what music is about. This is what you call singing. The audience cheered. Everyone was shouting excitedly. On screen, many of the audience members could be seen standing up and holding up their hands, waving them around crazily, feeling very pumped up from the performance. At this moment, the music slowed down as the drum kicks faded away. When the audience was th thinking that Judanian would repeat the chorus and let the rhythm pump up the audience again, the music began to slow instead. The original version of Zhong Yuanchi's I Don't Believe arrangement and lyrics were changed by Judanian. He added in a conclusion, a type of response lyrics into the ending. Judanian's face looked a little haggard, his voice sounding very light yet deep. Compared to his screaming earlier, it sounded like he was mumbling to himself as he sang, perhaps my life is worse than others. Perhaps I really have no talent. Perhaps I'm destined to be a lowly person. Perhaps songs will be left unanswered forever. It was the end of the song. The music slowly came to an end as well. Zhong Yuanchi was already leading everyone to stand up and giving her sincerest applause. Everyone in the studio also stood up with warm applause for him. Hearing her ex-husband screaming on the show, Grandma Wang did not seem to have much of a reaction. But when he started singing the parts of his rhetorical answers of, perhaps, Grandma Wang immediately held her face in her hands and unexpectedly started crying. She was crying so hard that it sounded like she would not stop at any time soon. Her son said, Mother. So, my father sings this well. Grandma Wang pressed her hands against her eyes, unable to stop crying. Old Jew. Woo 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 woo. The feud between his parents, the complex relationship between them. As their son, he might not ever fully understand all of it, but when he saw his mother at this moment, he could guess that, perhaps she had already forgiven his father. Perhaps she already understood his father. Dong dong dong. The door was being knocked on. When Mr. Ju went to open the door, he saw his old neighbor excitedly shouting, Little Ju, your father's on TV. Your father's on TV. Mr. Ju said, I saw it. The old neighbor said, Did your mother see it as well? We're both watching, Mr. Ju replied. My mother is feeling a little emotional right now. Then some footsteps came thumping from the stairwell. Another old neighbor who looked to be past 50 years old came over, shouting, Sister Wang. Your spouse is on TV. He sang really well. He sang really well. I never knew my brother Ju had such a hidden talent. So his singing is actually this good. Did you see it, Sister Wang? The four coaches all turned around for Brother Ju. You have a star in your family. Brother Ju's really great. When the other neighbors heard the commotion, they too came out into the corridor. What's happening? What happened? Quickly go and watch Central TV Department 1. Old Jews on a TV show. What? Are you sure? Central TV Department 1? Isn't that the voice? Yeah, Old Jew went and performed a song. He sang great. Really? Ayo. Hey, I must go and watch the rerun. The phone in their house started to constantly ringing. Many of their relatives and friends were all calling Grandma Wang, and even an ex-bandmate of Ju Danian from his younger days called. They had not expected that, years after they had given up, Ju Danian had actually continued with determination to sing and perform. 
They spoke to Grandma Wang for a very long time, saddened by what had happened but also feeling happy at the same time for Ju Danian. 40 Years After 40 years of determination, Ju Danian had finally proven himself on the stage of The Voice. He had finally fulfilled that long-awaited dream, so what else could he be happier about than this? On TV, the coaches arguing segment finished. The coaches were all fighting over the contestant, but it ended up with the original singer of I Don't Believe, Zhong Yuanqi, successfully pulling Ju Danian over to her team. Chen Guang felt so regretful about this that he slammed his hand onto the table, but still ended up raising both his arms to lead the audience to shout for Ju Danian. Let us all show our respect to the man who has not given up on his dreams of being a musician after years and years. He sang very well. This is the first time I've heard a rock song that moved me so much. It's also the voice that touched me the most. No matter what happens from here, Grandpa Ju, you'll always be the champion of the voice in my heart. Ju Danian. Ju Danian. Ju Danian. Ju Danian. The entire studio audience's blood was boiling passionately. They hailed him in unison, creating an extremely impressive atmosphere in the venue. Chapter 695, the second episode's viewership ratings released. The second episode was on fire. The voice was once again so popular. After the program's broadcast ended at 10.30 p.m., the topic of discussion online was again focused on the voice. The threads and Weibo posts regarding the program were exponentially soaring. If described on a linear graph, the angle of elevation would be at 10 or 20 degrees before the program began. But starting from 9 p.m., the angle of elevation was almost at 90 degrees. The Feast of the Voice was once again spreading through the internet. Countless people were going crazy and screaming for the voice once more. The second episode was amazing to watch. I love Yuan Tong. Who cares about Yuan Tong? Yeah, Grandpa Ju was the awesome one. Supporting this up like crazy, I really love Grandpa Ju as well. How crazy is this? Grandpa Ju was rocking and rolling. Countless likes for that. This episode is very impressive too. Who says that the voice's second episode might not meet everyone's expectations? It's clearly a good surprise. And obviously as awesome as the first episode. I should have known that teacher John would never let us down. Why? There is no why. It's simply because he is John Yi. This name is basically a seal of quality and is synonymous with creating miracles. Having watched so many of Zhong Yi's programs like Lecture Room, Zhong Yi's talk show and The Voice, I'm beginning to realize how great Zhong Yi is. I'd heard of Zhong Yi's name some time ago and knew a little about him. But it was only through The Voice that I started liking him, though I've heard that his reputation isn't very good. Foot, it's far worse than not very good. Haha, <laughs> has teacher Zhong ever had a reputation before? For him, he's always fighting with his fellow peers, and many people in the industry can't wait for him to be brought down, so it would be strange if anyone actually had a good opinion of him. But to us common folk, Zhong Yi is still quite a good person. He's loyal, honest, capable, and dares to do what he says. Let me just put it this way for you, my friend. In the entertainment, literary, educational, and cross-talk circles, John Yi is the only person to have scolded or offended almost half of all his peers, but still survived well in these industries. No one could do anything about this guy at all. Just think about it. From all of that alone, you can see how capable John Yi is. If it were any other celebrity, if they even offended someone from just one industry, they would probably have been condemned many times already, let alone offending so many people from so many industries. Only Zhong Yi has been an exception, that's why so many people are calling him a wonder of the entertainment circle, because this guy has truly been too wondrous. The voice is really a program of very high standards. After the second episode has been broadcast, there shouldn't be any more doubters of the voice, right? I'm afraid there shouldn't even be the slightest bit of doubt to be found around here anymore. Face-smacking Zhong is face-smacking again. I can already feel the pain of those industry insiders. He he, that might not be true. Many of Zhong Yi's industry peers are his lifetime adversaries, so they won't just stop doubting because of this incident. I'm quite sure they still have many people who won't give up just yet. They're probably waiting for the release of the viewership ratings for The Voice's second episode at this moment. 
After all, the statistics reflect the situation in the most practical sense. I'm waiting for it too. I wonder how high the second episode be. The voice is way ahead at the moment, so if there's anyone who could beat the voice's first episode's record of the viewership ratings for the past three years, then I'm afraid that it can only be the voice itself. The next day. At Central TV Tower. In the voice's program team office. When Zhong Yi reached the office, almost all of his colleagues were already there. Everyone had arrived very early today and congregated to discuss the last night's broadcast. The second episode's recording was finished several days ago, including the blind auditions for the third and fourth episodes. The program team staff had watched all of these in the recording studio, so logically they shouldn't have been so excited about the broadcasted episode. However, there was an essential difference between watching it live and on television because the feeling and atmosphere were totally different. What was broadcast on television had gone through the editing process first, with the contestants' intro clips and their interviews added in and the overall pace of the episode optimized. The final broadcast footage was radically different from watching it live. Together with post-production color correction added, the quality and atmosphere were raised by several levels when watching it on television. As a result, when the staff watched it, they also felt very excited, especially when Judanian's segment came up. Many of them even cried as it was so moving. Director Zhong. You're here? Good morning, Director Zhong. A few of them greeted. Ha Chichi came up and said, Director Zhong, last night's episode was edited great. Zhong Yi laughed. Using my recommendations when editing, the effects turned out rather well, didn't it? The suggestion you had before had a much slower pace. If we had done it that way, the audience definitely would not have approved of it. Hachichi gave a wry smile. My suggestion was just in accordance with the industry's recommended practices, but when I saw the edit based on your suggestion and guidance, I realized that the recommended practices of our industry are really getting old fashioned. Zhong Yi said, that might not be true, since every program has its own style and rhythm. As long as we find a suitable approach, it should be good enough. When it came to the production of the voice, whether it be the recording or post production processes, Zhong Yi had strictly adhered to the version from his previous world. He fully trusted and respected the style of the version that had matured and been accepted by the audience of his previous world. Little Wang, who was not too concerned about the post production or editing, quickly asked, Are the viewership ratings out yet, Director Zhong? Zhong Yi said, I don't think so. Wu Yi gulped. Do you think that the second episode will surpass the first one? Zhong Yi shook his head. Who can ever predict something like that? There's really no point in thinking about or analyzing it so much. We can only see if the audience will accept it and wait for the final tabulation of the statistics. At around 10.30 a.m. The viewership rating statistics for Thursday's variety shows were released. Zhong Yi was in his office when he found out the news. It was little Wang Hu who hurriedly came knocking on his door to tell him about it. Director Zhong. Director Zhong. It's released, it's been released. Zhong Yi smiled. You scared me for a second there. Little Wang was very excited. Quickly take a look at the viewership ratings. Let me take a look then. Zhong Yi took the viewership ratings report little Wang handed to him. When he saw the first row, the words The Voice of China were written there. The Voice's second episode viewership ratings, 2.11%. Building on the ratings of the first episode, it had increased by another 0.1%. It must be known that this was actually an absolutely astonishing result. That's because, of this world's variety shows, most of them only got viewership ratings of around 0.5%, so an increase of 0.1% was clearly not a small amount. John Yi smiled a little. It's quite all right. Little Wang however did not feel that it was quite all right. Outside, among all the other staff of The Voice, no one else thought it was quite all right either. To them, the result was basically defying all common sense and everyone was getting extremely excited over it. The first episode had already broken the two-point rating. But the second episode had set yet another new, national record in the viewership ratings of variety shows in recent years. It had utterly defeated all of the other variety shows in the same time slot. 
the release of the second episode's viewership ratings had given a strong boost to their program team and Central TV Department 1. Only at this moment did they finally have the courage to say that Central TV Department 1 had made a strong return to the variety scene and reclaimed its position as Big Brother. And the hero of this victory was no doubt Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi had used a show that no one took seriously, and surprisingly led Central TV to defiantly sweep the entire domestic variety show industry. No one could stop them. No one could compare to them. This was absolute carnage. It was a battle that no others had a chance to win. Online. The congratulatory messages came flooding in in the tens of thousands. Although it was expected, it still came as a surprise. Not only did the second episode's viewership rating not drop, it even increased by 0.1%. That's too frightening. The voice is going to be unstoppable at this rate. Damn. F asterisk asterisk K. Come and see, quickly. The voice is defying all common sense again. Ha ha ha, those industry insiders who constantly criticize the voice can finally give up. Their statements will express, we will take some days off to recharge. When Zhong Yi is out with another new work, we will be back again. A lifetime of criticism, a lifetime of insults, we will never give up, we will never waver. Congratulations teacher Zhong. How exciting. In recent years, many people have been saying that Central TV Department 1 is getting old, and no longer has its status like back in its glorious past. But they seem to have forgotten that a starving camel is still bigger than a horse. What Central TV Department 1 lacked was probably only someone great like Zhong Yi who can turn the tide for them. Today, after staying silent for some years, Central TV Department 1 is finally back. The once big brother of the variety world is finally making a comeback. The giant is attacking again. Beware, all satellite channels. I'm delighted, face smacking Zhong's NTH battle with his industry peers has him walking away with the last laugh again. With the excitement of the voice, the variety show industry will once again warm up. Zhong Yi has not only saved Central TV Department 1, he has saved the entire variety world. Central TV Department 1 joining hands with Zhong Yi, the largest television network in the industry together with the most outstanding program planner of the industry, who could stop them. Congratulations, the voice has set another record. 2. 11%. You are really goddamn going, to see all other summits dwarfed, and savor the scene. The legend continues. The voice fully deserves this honor. Teacher Zhong, well done. Really awesome. An awesome show. Awesome contestants. And also, an awesome host. This day will surely be forever remembered in the history of the variety world. This is certainly the era that great heroes will emerge from. Starting today, the variety world has officially stepped into the era of Zhong Yi. He who gains Zhong Yi can rule the world. In the office. Zhong Yi was checking his rankings on the Celebrity Rankings Index website. In the B-list Celebrity Rankings, he immediately spotted his current position. Third from last. Not too long ago, he was in last place, but after two episodes of The Voice, Zhong Yi had been soaring in popularity and jumped two spots up on the B-list rankings in just a short time. It should be known that the gap between the celebrities in the B-list was much larger than those in the C, or D-lists, the disparity between each placing was much greater. Just from Zhong Yi's promotion from the C-list to the B-list rankings, it could be seen how difficult it was. He had spent a long period of time increasing his popularity score before he successfully got into the B-list rankings. But now, after just a short time of two episodes, Zhong Yi as a host of The Voice, who although did not have much appearance time, with his show of reciting those advertising messages, his popularity had once again soared. This was very quick for the fact that he was in the B-list rankings. At the beginning of the year, Zhong Yi had been thinking of trying to aim for becoming a B-list celebrity. He would have been satisfied as long as he could get into the B-list rankings. But who knew that just after a short two months, not only did Zhong Yi reach his goal, he was already heading straight for the A-list celebrity rankings. Although there was still a long way to go, his momentum was obvious. He was already safe from dropping down into the C-list rankings due to his instability, and need not worry about being overtaken by Chen Yi anymore. The show was on fire. His popularity was soaring. 
After all these days of setbacks and busy days, John Yee's mood today was the best. He was humming a song in his office, finally able to get a breather. Zhong Yi was very satisfied of his own performance during this time. After getting past all the hard work and tiredness from working, he was already reaping the rewards. Although the people who did not like him still continued to dislike him, and the industry peers he had offended were still aiming for him to fall, Zhong Yi did not care about any of those. He clearly understood that for a celebrity in the entertainment industry, the most important thing was popularity. Popularity and fame were the bases that these celebrity needed to get a say in things. Nothing else mattered. Chapter 696, The Higher Education Entrance Examination Board's Invitation Viewership ratings of The Voice's second episode had slapped many people's faces once again. The people loved it. The media were fighting to get their coverage out. The industry was silent in unison. Those who were waiting to laugh at Zhong Yi and The Voice, hoping that the show's second episode would plunge, were also made to shut up. Some people even sneakily deleted their Weibo posts or forum comments that cast doubt onto Zhong Yi and his new program, making it seem like nothing had been said at all. It was business as usual. Earth still continued to spin. At this point, the battle between Zhong Yi and a part of the industry was laid to rest. In the afternoon, at the bottom of the television station tower, at a restaurant on the northern side of Bei Lake, Zhong Yi paid out of pocket and gave another celebratory meal to everyone in the program team. Director Zhong, a toast to you. All right, but I'll use tea on behalf of beer. It's the weekend tomorrow, do we still have work to do? No, there's nothing else. Everyone will have their full days off to rest for a few days. Oh. Great. We can finally get some rest. The voice was already progressing as planned. Whether it was the production process or the viewership ratings, there was nothing to worry about anymore. Everything was heading towards the best possible outcome. It was all in control of the hands of Zhong Yi and his team. At this moment, the entire program team staff could finally all relax. Their days of being pressured by the deadlines and stressed out by work were finally over. A middle-aged female editor of the program team said, Director Zhong, I want to inform you about this in advance. In a few days, I might have to take two days off as my son is getting ready for his college entrance exam. Since my husband is too busy, I will have to stay and help him revise and make a last sprint to the college entrance examination. And there's still meals to be cooked too. I'm going to be so busy in the next few days. Zhong Yi wondered, the college entrance exam has not started yet. Not yet, it's only the beginning of June now, the female editor said. When is the college entrance exam? Zhong Yi asked, feeling unsure about it. A.D. Zhongs were thought that Zhong Yi was just joking, so he laughed. The college entrance exam is held at the end of June every year. Director Zhong, did you forget because you've been too busy? Late June? Zhong Yi repeated. Ha Chichi said, yes, it's only about a little more than 10 days from now. He didn't forget, nor was he playing dumb. Zhong Yi really did not know. In his previous world, the college entrance examination had been changed some years back to fall on usually the 7th or 8th of June. It had always been like that ever since. After he had been suspended from Peking University, Zhong Yi hadn't been paying much attention to news like this as he had been very busy with the voice's production work, so he even thought that the college entrance exam was already over. Only now did he find out that the date of this world's college entrance exam was slightly different from his previous worlds. The college entrance exam questions and the order of subjects being tested were going likely going to be different over here as well then. Wu Yi said, Sister Li, how's your son doing academically? Sister Li said, it's quite good, but our home does not fall under Beijing's household registration, even though my son goes to school in Beijing. For the exam, we would have to go back to our old place. That's why I'm feeling quite worried. Hachichi said, isn't it the same wherever you take the exam? Sister Lee waved her hands. It's not the same, not the same at all. These days, the questions are all set independently by the provinces. The Beijing college entrance exam is always easy every year. The admission cutoff point is also lower, so there's definitely less pressure. But it's not the same for other provinces, some are more difficult and some are even easier, so it all depends on your luck. Hachichi could not understand why. 
the Beijing examination is easier? Sister Li snorted. Yes, much more easier too. Zhong Yi asked with a smile, has your son expressed the university he would like to get into? She nodded and said with some pride in her voice, his first choice is Peking University. Ha Chichi sounded somewhat impressed as she said, then your son must be very academically inclined. He's not too bad as long as he can fulfill his potential. Then there's a good chance. The female editor said, if my son really gets into Peking University, then I will treat everyone to a feast. That's a promise. Zhongs was smiled and said, Sister Li, you should be treating Director Zhong to a feast instead. He's the one who is a true Chinese department lecturer and math department associate professor at Peking University. Sister Li immediately smiled. I will definitely be treating. I was still hoping that after my son gets admitted into Peking University, Director Zhong would be able to look after him. Zhong Yi shrugged while smiling and said, I've already been suspended for the past semester, so I doubt that I would be able to go back to teach this year. But if your son does apply for the Chinese or math department, I still do know quite a few teachers personally, so if there's any problems, they would help me look out for him. Let's talk about that when it happens. Since you've already given me your word, let me toast you. Sister Li looked happy, then she picked up her glass of orange juice and clinked it against Zhong Yi's glass. Zhong Yi said, I hope your son will be able to get what he wants. Suddenly, his cell phone started buzzing inside his pocket. It was a call. When he took it out to check the number, the caller ID showed Pan Yang's name, the dean of the School of Mathematical Sciences. He found it strange that Dean Pan would call him at such a time, so he told everyone at the table to continue without him first and excused himself. He went outside to answer the call. Zhong Yi, hello? Pan Yang, hello, Professor Zhong. Zhong Yi, Dean Pan, don't address me like that, just call me little Zhong. Pan Yang, haha, then I will call you teacher Zhong instead. Are you outside? Zhong Yi, I was just eating lunch, what is it that you're looking for me for? Pan Yang, there's something, but it's difficult to explain over the phone. Shall we meet up instead? Zhong Yi, what time? Pan Yang, it's best if we could meet now. Zhong Yi, so rushed? It might not be possible now, I'm still not off work yet. Pan Yang, oh, I remember now. You've recently created a new TV show and it seems like it's doing rather well in the nation as well now, isn't it? Hmm, then why don't you tell me when you will be free? What time do you finish work? Zhong Yi, why don't you tell me what's the matter first so that I won't feel so unsettled? After a moment's pause, Pan Yang said, all right then, it's actually fine to tell you over the phone since it's not too big an issue. I'm looking for you mainly regarding this year's college entrance exam papers in Beijing. Zhong Yi was taken aback, huh? Pan Yang said, I have been appointed as the supervisor of this year's question setting team for the Beijing college entrance exam. The questions for the examination were already set and ready for the mathematics, Chinese literature, English language, arts, and science sections, including a few alternate question sets. But we have suddenly encountered a situation in which all of those question sets were not approved by the board. The Beijing College Entrance Exam has never been too difficult. It was going to be the same this year, so the leaders on the Board of Education wanted to add more difficulty to it. If they had let us know earlier, it would have been fine since everyone could have discussed and slowly refined the exam standards. But we don't have much time anymore. The college entrance exam will take place in just over 10 days. The tests have to be ready before that, which means we have to confirm the rough draft by next Monday at the latest. That leaves us with just around three days to plan, get approval from the board, and settle the printing of the papers. It seems like we won't be able to make it in time. That's why the question setting team members are all reaching out for help from their friends right now. The more people we have, the faster we can get it done. The first person I thought of when I knew our mathematics section needed someone was you. Zhong Yi said nervously, Dean Pan, you have a group of professors, deans, and PhDs there with you, surely it wouldn't trouble you all to increase the difficulty level of the exam's questions, would it? Pan Yang, it's different. Of course it would be easy to increase the difficulty. We could just grab anyone from our team to set an exam consisting of questions that even a research student would not be able to solve. That would definitely be easy, 
but it's different for setting questions for the college entrance exam. The difficulty is not done for the sake of causing trouble to the students, it's just to filter out the students to pick out who is good. That is why the question not only needs to have value, it also needs to be presented so that a high school student would be able to solve it with their knowledge and understanding. That's not an easy thing to do, do you understand? Suppose I throw a mathematical conjecture into the exam. Then the questions would surely be very difficult, but the students definitely couldn't answer it, and even I wouldn't be able to solve it, so what's the point in that? Increasing the difficulty is not the objective, what we want is to screen the examinees. I see, John Yi responded vaguely. Pan Yang, so what do you say? Would it be convenient for you to join us? John Yi, I've never set exam questions before. It seems like you really trust me. Pan Yang laughed, but I've seen the problems that you've given before. Oh. What problems did I give? John Yi did not remember. The few problems you gave when you were at experimental primary school. Those were quite interesting and had a standard of difficulty to them. It's also philosophical in nature and quite interesting at the same time, Pan Yang said. Zhong Yi sighed, but those are elementary math questions. Pan Yang laughed loudly, don't underestimate that. It's hardest to set questions for elementary math. If you ask me to make a question at my own level, I can design it to be interesting and good, but that's because I am at this level and I know what is difficult and what is easy for people like me. But if you need me to set a question for the elementary level, then I will truly be at my wit's end. To me, those questions are all the same, they're all too simple. Because of that, it becomes harder to differentiate between what's hard and easy. On this front, you have an advantage as you are able to bring yourself down to their level of thinking to understand the difficulty level for them. This is a quality that any excellent exam question setter must have, and from those few questions of yours, it already proves that you are really much better at setting questions than us. Otherwise, I wouldn't have come to you for help. Zhong Yi jokingly said, you're praising me to the high heavens. I feel like if I didn't agree, I would be letting you down. Pan Yang, then it settled. Zhong Yi confirmed, all you want are difficult questions, right? Pan Yang acknowledged, but solvable within the context of an examinee, though we prefer it to be as difficult as possible. Are you sure? What if the questions are too difficult, what then? Won't everyone curse me to death? Zhong Yi had some concerns about this. Pan Yang was tickled, the question setter for the college entrance exam has always been a scapegoat. If you make the questions too easy, examinees from other provinces and autonomous regions will scold you, claiming that the Beijing question setter has low standards and how well they would do if they took their exam here instead. But if you make it too difficult, the Beijing examinees will scold you, saying that you have something against them. So no matter what, you won't be able to escape criticism. That's also a reason why many teachers do not like being appointed to the college entrance examinations question setting team. Zhong Yi nearly fainted. Then why did you still ask me? Pan Yang's answer left Zhong Yi annoyed but amused. You're still afraid of being scolded? Online, on TV, in the media, has any day passed without you getting scolded by a multitude of people? Zhong Yi, no comment. Pan Yang said, besides, every province will be setting their own questions and determining their own admission cutoff points. If a province's exam questions are too difficult, nobody will do well and the mean will also be low. Then the entry cutoff points will also be lower and it will all become relatively the same, so that is still going to be a fair assessment. We are not purposely trying to turn away examinees here, rather trying to see their standards. The standard of Beijing's exam has long been criticized by people. So the board has hardened its heart this year and wants to bring a change to the style and thought behind the exam questions. That is why I think you're free to unleash whatever you can think of, regardless of how difficult it is. We're just afraid that it won't be difficult enough. I am very curious about the type of questions you will create if you were assigned to present the last three major questions of the mathematics section of the exam. Zhong Yi thought for a bit then said, All right then, let me consult with my director at work first. Pan Yang, it's rather urgent, so try to give me your answer by today. Sure, Zhong Yi said. Actually, Zhong Yi already had a decision. Not just anyone could quality as a question setter for the college entrance examination. 
Although Pan Yang had mentioned that many teachers did not wish to be one, it was actually just an offhand remark. If the question setting team truly sent an invitation, hardly any teachers would reject such an opportunity, because it would be an honor and also a very strong acknowledgement of an educator's contributions. This acknowledgement did not mean much to Zhong Yi. What he placed more importance on for this appointment was the fame he would receive from it. In recent times, the voice had brought Zhong Yi an enormous amount of reputation and let him taste the sweetness of his popularity soaring again. But he knew that if he were to achieve his target of becoming an A-list celebrity this year, then just that amount of reputation was not enough. He had to find the quickest way to get promoted to the A-list rankings, so it was impossible to not take the unconventional path. Another source of fame would always be good. And since his work here was already becoming cyclical, it wouldn't matter to have some fun on the college entrance examinations question setting team. He would be idle anyway. So why not earn some fame with a part time job? Chapter 697 The Chinese Literature Team Approaches 2. After the meal, Zhong Yi headed straight to the deputy director's office at Central TV Department 1. When he got there, Jiang Yuan was not around and probably still at lunch. After waiting for around 15 minutes, Jiang Yuan finally returned. Hey, little Zhong? Jiang Yuan saw him as he walked out from the elevator. Zhong Yi was sitting on the sofa near the elevator lobby. Director Jiang. What are you doing here? Are you looking for me for something? Jiang Yuan asked. Zhong Yi acknowledged, there's something I need to discuss with you. Can we speak in your office? Jiang Yuan was already walking in front of him. Sure, come in. When the two of them were inside, Zhong Yi got straight to the point. Director Jiang, I need to apply for a long leave from the station as I have something to attend to. On seeing Jiang Yuan stunned, he continued, just now, someone from the Beijing question setting team for the college entrance exam contacted me, and informed me of a situation that had arisen on their side which they need me to go over to assist them with. Jiang Yuan was taken aback. The college entrance exam's question setting team? Zhong Yi confirmed, then said, they were quite urgent about it and only just contacted me, so I wasn't prepared for it either. Jiang Yuan remained silent for a while before saying, I heard that those who are responsible for proposing the college entrance exam questions can't return to their homes or contact the outside world, even after finishing their work. The college entrance exam will only begin at the end of the month. If the Voices program team does not have their executive director around, how are they going to handle their work? Your new program has just started making good progress after two episodes have been broadcast, and although the viewership ratings are very satisfying and placed first nationwide for now, you can't be relaxing just because of that. John Yi said, I know that, but during the recording a few days ago, we've already recorded three episodes in a row, so the recordings for the broadcasts for next Thursday and the following Thursday are already finished. I also personally supervised the post-production of those episodes yesterday, so there shouldn't be any clash with the times. When the exams are over, I will be back to quickly continue with the production of the recording of the fifth episode's blind audition of The Voice. Please don't worry. There won't be any delays with the program's recording. Jiang Yuan nodded. That's fine then. Zhong Yi smiled and said, that's why I'm here to consult you first. Hi. I shouldn't be approving your request for leave. Jiang Yuan said, you should understand that the Voices program team is managed single-handedly by you. Besides you, none of them can take up this difficult task. If any unexpected situation occurs, I'm afraid the rest of the program team staff would not be able to handle it. I'm a little worried about them if you're not around. Hesitating a little, he added, but to be part of the college entrance examinations question setting team is also an honor and not an opportunity that comes knocking frequently. It doesn't seem appropriate if I don't allow you to go. Well, try your best to communicate with college entrance exam team to see if you can at least stay in contact on the phone at all times. Zhong Yi said, sure, I will try to do so. Jiang Yuan said, all right then, when you get back to the office, inform your program team staff about it. Settle whatever needs to be settled and do a proper handover. Sure. Zhong Yi excused himself and left. Downstairs. In the Voices program team office. When Zhong Yi came back, he immediately clapped his hands to grab everyone's attention and gather them around. 
Everyone, stop whatever you're doing now. I have something to announce. Everyone looked over. A. Director Zhong, please speak. Do you have any instructions for us? In the end, Zhong Yi said something surprising to all, I'll go on a long leave for the next two weeks, so I'll be leaving the work here to all of you. The moment the staff heard this, it stirred a commotion. Ah? You've applied for leave? For about two weeks? For more than ten days? Who will be in charge over here if you aren't around? Man, Director Zhong, can you stop fooling around? We'll be lost without you around. From the proposal planning of the voice to the pulling in of sponsors and organizing the preliminary auditions, all these stages of production were fully handled by executive director Zhong Yi alone. When they heard that he was going to drop everything at work, no one could get used to it. Zhong Yi said, it's only for a little more than 10 days of work. Since we've already recorded the next two episodes, when the time comes, you all can just hand it over to the other department to handle. It's not like you all are responsible for the broadcast and other tasks, so there isn't really anything to handle either. At most you all will have to follow my plans and instructions to promote the program, clarify any rumors, handle the forums, and create some discussion topics. Surely you don't need me around for such minor tasks, do you? In a while, I'll refine the remaining work processes for everyone. If you have any questions, you can ask me now. We will discuss and solve any issues that you all might have. After 2 p.m., I will not be around in the office anymore and will only return at the end of the month. Little Wang took a deep breath and said, Then, then should we call you if an unexpected situation occurs? Zhong Yi said, My affairs are a little complicated in the coming days, so I might not be able to be contacted on the phone. In any case, try to solve the problems by yourselves. There shouldn't be a possibility of an unexpected situation. He only dared to go on leave for that many days because he had already thought of all the possible scenarios and felt that there shouldn't be any incidents happening. The program recording was already done. Any unexpected scenarios were planned for. If an incident still occurred, then all of you should just quit. That would mean that everyone has just been dawdling around. An hour later. A little before 2 p.m. While Zhong Yi was taking the elevator down, he made a call to Pan Yang, Hello, Dean Pan. I've settled my things over here and applied for leave already. Where are you guys currently? Pan Yang, you're at Central TV Tower? Zhong Yi, yes. Pan Yang, then let me get someone to pick you up. Zhong Yi, I can drive there myself. Pan Yang, this location is confidential, I'll get someone to pick you instead. Zhong Yi, I see. Fine, I'll inform security about it. Ask the driver to come in by the side gate for staff and just tell security that he's looking for me. I'll be waiting at the smoking area on the first floor. Pan Yang, okay, I'll arrange it. Zhong Yi went downstairs to inform security and proceeded to the central TV tower's lobby to sit down on the sofa there. Thinking for a moment, he made a call back to his family. Do do, the call connected. Hello. It was a childish voice on the other end. Zhong Yi laughed, it's me. Chen Chen acknowledged on the other end. Zhong Yi, are any of my parents at home? Chen Chen, they're both at home. Zhong Yi, then ask one of them to answer the phone. Grandma, Zhong Yi's on the phone. Chen Chen called for her. Soon after, his mother answered, Hello, what's the matter, son? I'm making dumplings with your dad and my hands are covered with flour. If you have something to say, say it quickly. Zhong Yi got straight to the point, I can't come home for some days and probably can't be contacted through my phone either, so I'm informing you beforehand. The two of you don't need to work so much anymore now, right? I'll leave Chen Chen in your care for now. She'll be on summer vacation soon, so don't let her leave the house and run about. His mother asked, where are you going? Zhong Yi laughed and said, it's something good. I was invited to join the Beijing College Entrance Examinations Question Setting Team. When his mother heard that, she received a pleasant surprise. Really? Is it confirmed? Yeah, it's already been decided. Zhong Yi said, but we will be isolated from the public and probably can't make any calls out either. His mother immediately said, don't worry, just go on ahead and do what you need to do. 
your dad and I will take care of Chen Chen, so you don't have to worry about that. Do well, son, I believe in you. John Yi, okay. After the call to his mother, John Yi was just about to inform Wu Ziqing when suddenly another call came in. From the caller ID, he knew that it was Chang Cage from Peking University's Chinese department. John Yi was taken aback for a while, then pressed the answer key, Dean Chang. Chang Cage, Teacher Zhong, is it convenient to talk now? Yes, no problem. Zhong Yi said. Chang Cage, I have an urgent matter over here and was wondering if you'd be interested in it. It should be a good thing to you. There has been an unexpected situation with the Beijing college entrance exams. The Chinese literature exam papers are. Zhong Yi interrupted, you want me to propose questions? Chang Cage was a little surprised, you're very sharp. Zhong Yi, it's not that I'm sharp. Rather Dean Pan from Peking University School of Mathematical Sciences called me earlier to invite me to join the mathematics, question setting team. When he heard that, Chang Cage laughed, how convenient then. Since the question setting teams will all be at an isolated location, you can go over to the Chinese literature team to help out after you've finished your work with the mathematics team. I don't think that will cause any delays. Zhong Yi said, are you on the question setting team as well? Chang Cage said, I'm not on the team. One of the supervisors of the team contacted me for help. He's an old friend of mine and wanted me to recommend a few people, so I recommended you. You have a high literary standard and a supple mind. Since Beijing's exams this year want to experiment with some changes and creativity, you are naturally the best candidate. So it's decided then. I'll inform them first. When you arrive there, just directly contact the supervisor of the Chinese literature team. Zhong Yi said, sure. Twenty minutes later. The car arrived to pick him up. Zhong Yi got into the car and headed straight for somewhere in the suburbs of Beijing. Question setter for both the Chinese literature and mathematics exam sections? Zhong Yi pondered for a moment. Not only in the history of Beijing's college entrance exam, even throughout all the provinces in the country. There had never been such a precedent. Chapter 698, starting to set the questions. Later that afternoon. In the suburbs. At the Beijing College Entrance Examinations Question Setting Team Quarters. Outside, Pan Yang was waiting to receive him. Teacher Zhong, you're here. Dean Pan. Zhong Yi got out of the car and went over to him. This place is really far away, where are we? It's almost near Beihe province already, isn't it? Pan Yang laughed. It's close. This is just a simple place and the scenery isn't too bad either. The two small buildings on the hill are also very well equipped with all sorts of facilities, so the question setting team always comes and gathers at this place every year. Pausing, Pan Yang stretched out his hand. Please hand over your cell phone and any forms of communication devices to me first. There will be someone here to specifically keep them for you. Oh, do you see that front gate over there? We'll go inside from there and up the hill, but once we're past that gate, we won't be out anymore until after the college entrance exam is over. If you have to make any calls or settle anything, then do it now while you still can. John Yi pouted. Do we have to be that strict? Don't you know my character well enough? Would I possibly leak any questions? I still have a lot of work to handle at the television station. If I'm not around or unable to be contacted, I'm afraid that they won't be able to handle it. These are the rules, it's the same for me. Pan Yang threw his hands up. John Yi blinked a few times. But didn't you call me with your cell phone today? Pan Yang smiled and said, I am one of the supervisors of the mathematics question setting team. Surely I need to hold on to a cell phone so that I can communicate with the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board and the other leaders. Besides, when I go back up to the office building, I will still need to surrender my cell phone, so it's the same for everyone. Sure, fine then. Zhong Yi took out his phone. If there's really a special case, then we will talk about it again, Pan Yang explained. Okay. The hill was not high. After driving for a few minutes, they reached the halfway point of the hill where two office buildings were situated at. Looking at the hilltop, there seemed to be two pavilions up top too and the breeze up here was very refreshing and cool. 
All the Chinese literature, mathematics, English language and other subjects question setting teams were situated in office building 1, while building 2 was designated as the dormitory. After the car was parked on the hillside, Pan Yang alighted together with Zhong Yi. They went straight into office building 1 and headed to the mathematics question setting team's office. There were quite a few people inside and even a hint of the smell of cigarettes. Most of them were gathered in smaller groups and talking away. Some of them were discussing the exam questions. There were even a few who got into an argument. The atmosphere was very tense because everyone was rushing to get the questions out before Monday's deadline, which still had to pass the board's approval. They carried a lot of stress, as increasing the difficulty along with creativity was nowhere near as easy as it seemed. When Zhong Yi came inside, the entire office looked at him at once. Professor Zhong. Whoa, Teacher Zhong is here? Teacher Zhong. Hello, Teacher Zhong. I've heard a lot about you. Haha, <laughs> we're finally seeing him in person now. Everyone obviously knew that Zhong Yi would be here today. Most of them were people Zhong Yi did not know, nor had he seen them before. But even though he didn't know them, it seemed like they knew him very well. Almost every one of them greeted Zhong Yi, with a few of those who specialized in the field of math research pulling him aside for a chat. On the mathematics team, Zhong Yi was rather well respected. After all, the global mathematical conjecture, Dale's conjecture, was solved by Zhong Yi. It was something that many mathematicians looked up to very highly. Zhong Yi was also one of the few world class mathematicians China could count as theirs, so he was considered to be in the Chinese mathematics world's elite. When Pan Yang invited Zhong Yi to the mathematics question setting team, no one had any objections to it and felt that it was only right T. Oh, do so. No matter how old Zhong Yi was, his standard in mathematics was there for all to see. In the group of around eight people, even if you put them together, including Peking University School of Mathematical Sciences Dean Pan, their total mathematics standards could probably still not match up to Zhong Yi, so who would not be convinced? Soon, everyone got down to business. This question won't make the cut. Yeah, this question has little value and the direction the board has given us is to not include something like it. Most of the questions we've been working on for the past month has gone up in smoke, hasn't it? Hi. It's pointless to complain, let's just continue on from here. The question I showed to you just now, I think it has a certain degree of difficulty. Can you guys take a look to see if there are any loopholes in it? This won't do. Oh. What's the problem? It'd be fine if it was short answer, but this is a multiple choice question. With the answer options available, it would be too easy even though this question might fit better in the first part of the section. Hi, it's really too difficult to make something and we don't even have enough time. Adding up all the time we have, it's just less than three days time. The other question setting teams are probably scrambling as well. Zhong Yi got into work mode very quickly. He did not say anything and only listened to what everyone was discussing with regard to the questions. He had to familiarize himself with the work first, such as the scope of the question and its presentation, etc. Occasionally, he would ask Pan Yang or the other colleagues about his doubts so that he could quickly understand this world's college entrance exam questions. In the end, he realized that this world's college entrance exam questions and scope were largely the same as his previous worlds. The only differences were the points allocation and the order of the sections. With his current knowledge, he felt more assured. Zhong Yi said, Dean Pan, I would like to take a few exams and go back back to my dorm to read up on them. I would also like to have the past rough draft of the exam that was sketched out by our team. Pan Yang said, sure, they're all available. A young team member said, Professor Zhong, we're depending on you this time. Zhong Yi quickly denied that and waved his hands. I'm only here to support. But Pan Yang said, don't think of just being the support. The math team is really going to depend on you for the questions. I've already discussed this with everyone beforehand. The creation of the questions will be mainly led by you. Huh? Zhong Yi said, why would I be in charge? Shouldn't the bulk of the questions be coming from you guys while I just need to handle the more difficult questions? Pan Yang smiled. The name Zhong Yi reverberates throughout the entire mathematics field. Since you have joined the mathematics question setting team, how could anyone else be in charge of the exam? 
no one should be in charge you, and no one would do so either, so let's not try to be unconventional. Your name will be submitted and made public as the head of the mathematics examination question setting team. For the majority of the exam, most of the questions will be set by you. I've already sought approval from the board and they too are saying that's how it should be done. Zhong Yi said, you're really ordering me about now, aren't you? If I have to set even half of all these questions, wouldn't that take too much effort? Besides, I still have to go to the Chinese literature team's office. A mathematics team member was taken aback. Why are you going to the Chinese literature team's office? Zhong Yi said, I've also agreed to help out with the Chinese literature exam's question setting team. Someone said in a speechless manner, you can even make Chinese literature exam questions. Pan Yang. The other team members. F asterisk asterisk K. Why couldn't he set the Chinese literature exam questions? These mathematicians were suddenly reminded that Zhong Yi was not just a mathematician, he was also an official lecturer at Peking University's Chinese department. It wouldn't be strange that the Chinese literature examination question setting team would look for him to help them. Moreover, thinking about it now, Zhong Yi was also very well versed in history, so it would also have been normal if the history examination question setting team wanted him. Professor Zhong was someone who was totally different from the mathematicians like them who spent all their lives learning about math and teaching. Zhong Yi's path ahead was, much broader than theirs. Pan Yang said, then you should arrange your schedule. I don't care about what the Chinese literature team does, but over here at the mathematics team, we must definitely finish on time. Zhong Yi said, okay, I will do my best. But first let me go and take a look at the Chinese literature team. Pan Yang nodded. Fine. Get yourself familiarized with the work first. We'll meet here again tomorrow morning before 9 a.m. We'll continue discussing the questions at that time. Sure, I'll try to come up with a few questions tonight as well. After saying that, Zhong Yi excused himself and left. He asked around for where the Chinese literature team was located and then went to find the place. He was planning to make some introductions there first and get a few copies of their exams to research. The Chinese literature team office door was open. Inside, there were slightly less than 10 people discussing the exam. However, it did not seem as intense as the discussion over at the mathematics team. Everyone spoke softer and it also quieter in here. When Zhong Yi stepped in, he immediately noticed someone familiar, an old acquaintance whom he enjoyed a good relationship with. Teacher Su. Peking University Chinese Department teacher Su N.A. suddenly turned her head, looking surprised. Teacher Zhong? You're here too? Zhong Yi thought for a bit but realized it wasn't that surprising. Peking University's Chinese department was ranked number one in the entire country, so it wasn't that unexpected to have a Chinese department teacher here. When the others heard the commotion, they also looked over. A. Hey. Zhong Yi? Isn't that Zhong Yi? Everyone in the Chinese literature team was stunned. Su Na immediately came over to welcome him. What are you doing here? Zhong Yi smiled and said, I'm helping out at the mathematics question setting team, so I'm here. Oh, is the chief of the Chinese literature team here? Dean Chang told me to come and look for him. Su Na was taken aback. Looking for the chief? At this moment, an office door at the back of the room opened and a man in his forties or fifties walked out. Teacher Zhong, you're here. My name is Yu Fan. Zhong Yi shook his hand. Hello. Chief Yu said, have you dropped by the mathematics team already? Yes, I have, Zhong Yi answered. Chief Yu nodded and then turned around to face his colleagues on the Chinese literature question setting team. Let me announce something. From today onward, Teacher Zhong will officially be joining our Chinese literature team. When everyone heard this, many of them showed rather awkward expressions. Chief Yu then said to Zhong Yi, let me introduce you. This is Teacher Liao Qi from Tsinghua University, this is Teacher Li Rui from Renmin University, this is Teacher Ma Qi from Beijing Normal University, this is Teacher Su Na from O. Oh, I don't need to actually introduce Teacher Su since you're both from Peking University's Chinese department. I'm sure you know each other already? Su N.A. giggled. Teacher Zhong, welcome. Zhong Yi also played along and shook her hand. Thank you, Teacher Su. 
as for the others, they were not so friendly. Some of them didn't come forward to Zhong Yi to get to know him a little, and even did not bother to have a short conversation with him. Chief Yu could also see that these people from the education or literary world seemed to have some sort of disagreement, or conflict with Zhong Yi, but did not say anything. He directly asked Su Na to bring Zhong Yi up to date with the work they needed to do, and then headed back into his office. In the Chinese literature team, Zhong Yi did not get the same amount of respect he had when he was at the mathematics team. The reason was very simple and likely to be because a literary person was typically more scornful of others. Zhong Yi was young and did not have many qualifications, having only worked for a semester at Peking University and even getting suspended later. He also had many conflicts and scolding battles with many of his peers from the literary and education world, so even though there were some peers like Su Na who enjoyed a good relationship with Zhong Yi, there were definitely more who had a poor relationship with him. Some of the literary and education world's members had not even met Zhong Yi before, but already hated him. As Zhong Yi had offended too many people before, now that they saw him coming on board and joining the Chinese literature team as an exam question setter, a lot of the teachers were not convinced and also felt that he was not worthy to be here. They all whispered privately to each other. What is he doing here? I don't know. What the heck is old you thinking? So what if he knows how to compose some poems? That doesn't mean that he can set questions for the college entrance exam. He's too rash, didn't he get suspended because of scolding others? The controversy he created after he started that lecture on Dream of the Red Chamber still exists now. There are still many critics of his theory. For someone who is not diligent academically, how can we let him come and set the college entrance exam questions? I am however convinced of Zhong Yi's standard in mathematics, which by the way he is really great at, so even if he is going to be in charge of setting their exam questions, no one would object to it. But the Chinese literature exam is different. This requires a rigorous understanding of Chinese literature and also an understanding of Chinese literature education. It is not something that a teacher who has only been teaching for six months would know. In the field of mathematics, Zhong Yi's achievements could be seen by everyone. Because for a mathematical conjecture or a math problem, you can either solve it or you can't. The quality is very clear there and it doesn't need much explaining either. Everyone could recognize it. However, in the literary and languages field, the standards were much blurrier. As they say, in martial arts, there's no second place, in literature, there's no first place. It was extremely difficult to differentiate who was better than another. Even if something you wrote was not read by anyone due to a lack of attention, if the experts and literature awards jury said that you were good, then you were good, which in turn meant you were a qualified literatus. On the contrary, the work you had written could be seen by a whole lot of people, gaining lots of attention, but if the industry insiders did not recognize you and picked at your faults, there was nothing you could do about it either. This was the exact situation Zhong Yi was in. As he had offended too many people, the controversy surrounding his works in the literary field had always been huge. He was young. Had never received an award before. Was a controversial figure in the industry. Just based on these three points, it meant that Zhong Yi was doomed to his awkward position in the literary field. Those who liked him felt that he would become part of the new generation of leading figures in the Chinese literary world, those who disliked him said that he was the black sheep of the literary world and would try ways and means to freeze him out of the field. Zhong Yi was not surprised by their reactions. He still maintained a smile and continued doing what he needed to do. In any case, he wasn't thinking of making friends with this bunch of people anyway. He chatted with Su Na for a short while to find out about the situation. After that, Zhong Yi took a sample exam and went back to his dorm in Building 2. He lay in bed relaxed and started studying the exam section by section. Occasionally, he would flip open some high school Chinese literature and mathematics textbooks for reference. Actually, Zhong Yi already had an idea in mind very early on to suddenly scrape the current batch of exams, and then come up another version that was more difficult might not seem easy to this group of exam question setters. They might not know where to start from or there might be insufficient time to do it, but to Zhong Yi, this wasn't a big issue at all. As long as he could understand this world's college entrance examination situation and scope of the questions, then everything else would be as easy as the flip of a hand. 
that was because this guy's mind might not have much of anything, but a lack of college entrance exams was not one of them. 2009's Jiangsu exams. 2010's Hebei exams. 2011's Shanghai exams. He had everything he needed and more. He had even taken those exams dating back to the 90s. As someone who had participated in the college entrance exams of his previous world, the amount of past exams he had seen, taken, and studied numbered close to at least a hundred. What he needed to do now was to find the suitable questions and put them together effectively. Picking up his pen, Zhong Yi started to write his first question. Chapter 699, Shocked Examinees. That night. In the dorm. Zhong Yi opened the game ring and bought a memory search capsule. After eating it, he started recalling his previous world's memories of the college entrance exam questions. He could still clearly remember many of the wondrous questions he had come across before but had also forgotten a lot of them, so he could only rely on the memory search capsule to remember them. One capsule was not enough. Then he used some more reputation points to buy another three capsules and gulped them all down in one go. Zhong Yi's goals were not just purely limited to his previous world's past college entrance exam questions. Many of the questions used by Tsinghua and Peking University for their student admissions, and other kinds of extremely difficult questions were brought up within Zhong Yi's memory. He expanded his coverage on the quantity of questions so that he could make the questions better. An hour. Two hours. Zhong Yi kept the lights on and worked nonstop. A. Hey, this question is pretty good. Ha ha, this question must be used. This question is fine too, let me shortlist this first. F asterisk asterisk K, this question will definitely get me some scoldings. He he, but it has to be this. What Dean Pan said was right. Other people might be afraid of being scolded but does this bro seem scared of being scolded? He progressed very quickly and efficiently. In the process of setting the questions, this guy would even laugh evilly sometimes. Without a doubt, he must have come up with some extremely tough questions. Meanwhile, each province's, municipalities, and autonomous region's higher education entrance examination boards were also busy with the setting of their college entrance exam questions. Some of the provinces had already finished their papers while others were still finishing up theirs. There were a lot of discussions online. On Weibo and some of the forums, all sorts of discussions were going on. It was always like this on a daily basis, some people would discuss makeup products, some would gossip about celebrities, and some were still dwelling on the surprise of the success of the Voice of China. Of course, there were also numerous examinees, their parents, and members of the public fervently discussing this year's National College Entrance Examination. As the college entrance exams date neared with each passing day, the news regarding the college entrance exam of each province was also getting increasingly popular. It's time for the annual college entrance exam again. Ari, my child is going to take the exam soon, but I wonder if he can score well enough to pass. That's right, it's only a few days away. Who will oversee the setting of the questions in Shanghai this time? The questions for the history exam last year were all rather difficult. Our greater Jiangsu science exam questions last year were also quite difficult. It will be my turn this year to take the college entrance exam. I hope that Greater Jiangsu won't try too hard and just give some easy questions. I'm begging for easier questions. 1. The people of Jinsha express their great stress. The people of Jiangnan province cannot help but laugh. Who's saying that their stress is greater than ours? Last year, our college entrance exam questions were evaluated as the most difficult in the entire country. No one in the entire province got full marks in any of the mathematics, Chinese literature, arts, and science sections. Even the top student had points deducted. Our Liaodong province had questions that weren't simple too. Ha ha, as the greatest, I have absolutely no stress. Foot, your Beijing exams are always so simple every year. That's right. I've attempted three of Beijing's exams and could achieve tier 1 scores. But when I attempted the other provinces' exams, I could only achieve tier 2 scores. Don't you think there's too big a difference in difficulty? You people from Beijing are too fortunate. F asterisk asterisk K, I could do the Beijing exams when I was in my second year of high school. They are all college entrance exams but why is there such a stark difference in difficulty? 
I despise your Beijing college entrance exams. A certain Weibo trending topic. The topic regarding this year's Beijing exams had appeared on Weibo for discussion. The people who joined the discussion were the examinees in Beijing and their parents. I hope that this year will even be slightly easier. Actually, it's pointless to be any easier. If the subjects are easy and everyone can get high scores, it will just result in a higher cutoff entry to college. It will be the same outcome in the end. There will be surely some difference, the easier the better. Right. But I hope that the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board will maintain their style and inherit the fine tradition of the Beijing College Entrance Exam difficulty. I will give a like to all of you if the papers are strictly set with a very, very, very simple line of thought to the questions. Ha, huh, it shouldn't be too easy, otherwise it won't be challenging at all. Agreed, it's meaningless if it's too simple. Beijing's examinees obviously had less stress compared to other provinces' students as the conversations showed. Some of the examinees were happily chatting with extremely relaxed manners. Others were positively cocky, bragging that they wished the college entrance exams would be more difficult, or else it would not be a challenge to them. The question setters are still the same old batch of people this time? Wasn't there some news released earlier? Yes, I saw it too. Someone immediately posted a screenshot of the roster online. That's right, it's this one. It's the same teams as last year. Yu Fan was the chief of the Chinese literature question setting team. He normally sets essay and short answer questions. It's always more or less the same thing every year with nothing new to expect. I also know that teacher Liao Qi from the Chinese literature team was present on last year's team as well. His questions were pretty easy as they were basically as good as gimme questions. The Chinese team added teacher Su Na from Peking University's Chinese department. And she's even a young teacher? Her standard should be somewhat limited then, I don't think she will be able to set any difficult questions. Right. It's the same teachers for the science exam section as well. The mathematics team is also comprised of the same old teachers. When I saw these familiar question setters' names, I suddenly had an unprecedented confidence for this year's college entrance exam. Ha ha ha. Suddenly, just as these examinees and parents were discussing the exam restfully, a piece of news appeared online out of nowhere. Latest news from the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board. This year's lead question setter for the Beijing Mathematics Exam section has been changed to Associate Professor Zhong Yi from Peking, University School of Mathematical Sciences. When this news report was published, the entire batch of Beijing college entrance examinees were stunned. Many of these examinees and parents who were arrogant earlier were now at a loss for words. Holy shit! Your sister! F asterisk asterisk K your second granny! Zhong Yi is setting the questions? How can that be? You can't do things like that. That's such a D asterisk CK move. What are they trying to achieve with that? Are they even leaving us a path to retreat? Of all people, why did you people find Zhong Yi? I'm stunned. Heavens. I have a bad feeling about this. Me too, why am I getting the shivers? John Yi, John Yi. It's over. It's going to suck. That teacher Jong never does things predictably. Let him set the questions? Then do we still have a chance of survival? After many of the examinees from the other provinces saw the news released by the Beijing Higher Education Entrance. Examination board, they all gathered to this discussion board. People from Beijing were sarcastic to begin with. Due to their past year exams always being so simple and having little to worry about, the examinees from Beijing were bragging and stepping on people everywhere, enraging the masses. But upon hearing that Zhong Yi was going to be the Beijing question setter for the mathematics section, the examinees from other provinces all came in laughing and observing the fallout. Serves them right. Ha 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 ha. I'm dying of laughter. Pride goes before the fall. This is what it means to suffer after ultimate joy. With Zhong Yi setting the questions, there will be lots for you guys to suffer with. He he, he is one of the few world class mathematicians in China. Zhong Yi is such a wondrous and wicked fellow, so the questions he'll set definitely won't be any good for you. The people of Jiangsu send their condolences to the Beijing examinees. You're on your own. Good luck. 
the people of Jiangnan send their condolences to the brothers and sisters of Beijing. Everyone, take care. At this moment, there were still some confused examinees and parents from Beijing who did not normally pay attention to the news online. They asked with doubt, although Zhong Yi is one of the top mathematicians in the country, the questions he set might not necessarily be difficult and could even be very simple instead. Aren't you people overthinking it? Everyone is just scaring themselves maybe? The next moment, someone posted the elementary math questions that were leaked from the time when Zhong Yi presented them at Beijing's experimental primary school. The questions were, follow the rhythm and write out the multiplication formula, a set of onomatopoeic words 1, ding ding ding, ding ding ding, 2, ah, 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 3, woo woo woo, woo woo woo, 4, meow meow, meow meow, meow meow. Following that, another set of elementary math questions which were posted by Zhong Yi when he held Zhong Yi's classroom on Weibo previously were all screenshot and posted one by one. After that, those examinees and parents who did not know about it earlier all fainted at once. Holy sure asterisk T. What kinds of questions are those? Elementary math questions? Elementary your sister? This is too damn difficult. These elementary questions are already so difficult? If Zhong Yi were to set the college entrance exam questions, wouldn't it be insane? Who would be able to answer them? Oh my dear lord. Does the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board need to be so aggressive? Zhong Yi, cursing your great-grandpa. I want to cry. What to do? Why did I have to be taking this year's college entrance exam? If I knew it would turn out like this, I wouldn't have f asterisk asterisk king repeated my studies last year. I would have just gone to study at a third-tier college and be counting my blessings now. Back then, someone mentioned on Weibo what it would be like if Zhong Yi became the question setter for the college entrance exam. But who could have expected this to be a f asterisk asterisk king prophecy that came true? Our cursed mouths. Pooey. Pooey. That's right, it actually turned out to be real. The gods are out to destroy me. My math has never been good. Teacher Zhong, I'm your hardcore fan. Please don't come to Beijing to set the questions, go be a scourge to the examinees of the other provinces or autonomous regions instead. I beg of you. Among them, some straight-A students of Beijing remained fearless. Some of the straight-A students left their comments on Weibo. It's not such a big deal. They're just questions made by John Yi. How different can they be? I'm pretty good at math, so no matter who sets the questions, I'm still confident. I also don't have any stress as long as the Chinese literature exam section remains easy. Yes, the Chinese literature exam questions are key. It doesn't matter whether the mathematics exam questions are difficult or not, those will still be a breeze for me. Usually, people who excelled in math would only receive average marks in their Chinese literature results. That was the reason why they felt that even if the mathematics exam questions were more difficult, it was a good thing for them as it would help mark a distinct difference between them and the weaker students, which was advantageous to the straight-A students. All they wanted was for the Chinese literature exam section to be easy. However, just a few seconds after these straight-A students had happily posted their thoughts online, another piece of news appeared on Weibo. Latest news from the Beijing College Entrance Examinations Question Setting Team. The latest update confirms that Zhong Yi has also joined this year's Beijing Chinese Literature Exam Question Setting Team, and will likely be responsible for creating the short answer questions. It is understood that this is the first time in history that a person will be handling the question setting in both the mathematics and Chinese literature teams concurrently. Upon reading this news, those straight A students from Beijing were totally stunned. What the F asterisk asterisk K? Holy shit, Zhong Yi is also setting the Chinese literature exam questions? God damn it. Those straight A students who were typically honest and obedient model students couldn't help but swear when they saw this. They were all shocked by the news update. Chapter 700, Operation Send Zhong Yi Home. Several reports were published one after the other. Beijing Times, several young teachers, including Zhong Yi, have joined the college entrance exam question setting teams. This shows that the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board is determined to reform the Beijing College Entrance Exam.
The questions for this year's exams are not likely to be as comfortable as previous years anymore, so let's see how it will turn out. Beijing Online, a last-minute change in the exam question setting team leaves the Beijing College entrance exams in doubt. People's Daily Online, on temporary hiatus from the Voice of China, Zhong Yi tries his hand at setting the mathematics and Chinese literature sections for the college entrance exam. Will Zhong Yi be up to the task? The news spread like wildfire. Online, more and more people found out about the news. Yao Jiansai posted on Weibo, Whoa, I was trying to reach Zhong Yi's phone just now to chat with him, but couldn't get through even after trying a few times. I was still wondering what happened. So it was because he had gone up into the hills. Zhong Yi's fans were also loving this piece of news. Ha ha, teacher Zhong is coming up with something else again. Setting exam questions for the college entrance exam? Does he need to go that far? I'm so looking forward to it. I would like to see how difficult the questions Zhong Yi set can get. Is the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board starting to make radical changes this time? It looks like teacher Zhong will be taking on the lead role this time. But coming back to the point, no one has ever seen Zhong Yi's questions for the high school level before. I wonder if teacher Zhong Yi can really complete this task. Will his exam questions really end up being too difficult? I guess that's still a big question mark there. It will definitely be very difficult. I think so too, Zhong Yi's not going to be easy to deal with. Yeah, who doesn't know what teacher Zhong Yi's style is like? It's going to be a tough one for those college entrance examinees this time. Plus it's really unlucky to have unfortunately met with Zhong Yi getting appointed this year. I just took the college entrance exam last year, but now that I think of it, my heart is also fluttering with fear. If my mother had given birth to me two months later, I would have to take my college entrance exam this year. This is the first time I feel like I should be giving my heartfelt thanks to my mother. There were those who were here to observe the fun. There were others who were here to make sarcastic remarks. There were also those who wished to watch the world burn. Many of the Beijing College entrance examinees who saw this gnashed their teeth in hatred. You people, enough. Don't you all have any compassion at all? Has anyone ever considered how we are feeling? In the final push before the exam, we have practiced countless times on past exams, which were easier just so that we get used to the exam's question setter's train of thought and difficulty level. But now they're changing the lead question setter just like that, yet you all are here gloating at our misfortune. Do you all even know how hard we've worked? To be put into this spot by Zhong Yi who has suddenly become the lead question setter for both the mathematics and Chinese literature exam sections. This is as good as taking our lives. Teacher Zhong, knock it off, could you seriously knock it off? Just go back and do the voice as you were before. Why did you come to the college entrance examinations question setting teams to mess around? Hurry up and go back to where you came from. When my college entrance exam is done, I promise that I will buy three TVs and tune into Central TV Department 1 every Thursday at 9 p.m. to support and add to your viewership ratings. We were so close to taking the college entrance exam. How could they suddenly change the lead question setter? This is too unfair. Such bullies. Boycott John Yi. Yeah, let's strongly boycott John Yi. This is numbing. We can't let this guy be the lead question setter. Calling for teacher Zhong to leave the question setting team. Calling for Zhong Yi to leave the question setting team. Plus one. Plus 99,999. Teacher Zhong Yi, please go home. Suddenly, whether it was on Weibo, the forums, or any of the big or small Tiabar groups related to Beijing, many college entrance examinees and their parents started a new round of calls for boycotting. It was just over a week ago, when the television industry insiders were calling for a boycott on Zhong Yi due to his disruption of the market practices. But now another wave of boycotting activities was beginning. Everyone was shouting their mottos. This round of boycott actions was labeled as send Zhong Yi home. The examinees were creating an uproar. Teacher Zhong, your house is on fire. Quickly go home and check on it. Teacher Zhong, your telephone bills are due. Quickly go home and pay up. Teacher Zhong, the plants at home need watering. Quickly go home and water them. Teacher Zhong, there's a drop-dead gorgeous woman at your house bathing right now. 
quickly go home and take a look. There were many comments from the examinees. Their messages made many netizens who were just observing the fun laugh like crazy. One by one, more and more people began following the thread. Some of the more clever replies were even being forwarded countless times. In the present era of the college entrance exam, it had become a watershed moment in life and an important basis and formation of the current societal structure. So if even the entire society, media, and citizens were focused on something like that, then what could be said of the examinees themselves and their parents? Adding on the famous Zhong Yi from the entertainment circle who always worried others, Zhong Yi's name had become synonymous with this current topic. Naturally, the topic of him joining the Beijing College Entrance Examinations question setting team had instantly gone viral. Finally, the boycott that was started by the examinees was gathering great momentum. 10. 100. 200. Numerous Beijing examinees were even starting a group boycott, calling for everyone to join into their operation Send Zhong Yi Home, as more and more of the other Beijing examinees started to join. Elsewhere. The Beijing question setting teams were not in the know of all that was happening. Zhong Yi had stayed up overnight to rack his brains, trying to write out all the questions. Some of the other question setters were also still in discussions about the exam questions, while some were eating a late night snack. A few were already deep in sleep. They were all isolated from the outside world while they were here. That meant both physically as well as their communications like cell phones or the internet, so they were unaware of what was going on out there. Meanwhile, over at the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board, with the commotion online getting bigger and bigger, the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board also reacted and called an emergency meeting. There were 15 or 16 people taking part in the meeting and every one of their expressions showed that they found it both funny and annoying. None of them had expected that there would be such a huge reaction from the public because of their invitation of Zhong Yi to the question, setting team. Someone spoke but hesitated, Professor Zhong is. Another female staff member was feeling rather helpless. Teacher Zhong's affinity with the people seems to be very poor. Why does he always get boycotted wherever he goes to? I remember him getting boycotted by those people from the television stations just last week, didn't he? A young staff member gave a wry smile. But that can't be helped, can it? We can't possibly be thinking of sending Professor Zhong home? He is the country's few top mathematicians, so we can't just ask him to come and go as we like. We won't be able to justify our decision that way. If the examinees want to boycott, just let them do it. From a different perspective, this also shows that our decision to invite Professor Zhong to join us was right. Didn't we do so because we wanted to increase the difficulty of the exams? A woman said, that's true. Finally, after a discussion in the meeting, the board unanimously decided they would simply ignore the issue raised by the examinees. The next day, Operation Send Zhong Yi Home was still ongoing. Teacher Zhong, I've deposited one billion renminbi at your house. Teacher Zhong, your wife is going to give birth soon. Teacher Zhong. Teacher Zhong. On one of the larger Beijing forums, in the college entrance exam discussion group, this thread was even stickered at the top. All kinds of people were coming up with all sorts of strategies and posting all kinds of wondrous sounding ideas. However, to be realistic, everyone knew that this was just a form of self-entertainment by the examinees. Boycott Zhong Yi? The literary world had tried to boycott him before, but their faces ended up getting smacked swollen by Zhong Yi. The SARFT tried to ban him, but he still did whatever he wanted to do. The television industry also tried to boycott him, but now? All of them fell silent and not a single one of them could be seen anywhere. After so many people and groups had tried boycotting Zhong Yi multiple times, none had come to any effect at all, not to mention their group now. The examinees understood that they would have to face reality in the end. Sure enough, when they went back to school for their classes, every Beijing high school teacher wore a different expression altogether. Beijing Normal University Affiliated High School. Class 3 to 1. A female teacher was standing at the podium, not looking too well. Class, our revision using the notes and examination guides might be obsolete already. You won't need to do the focused review plan that I designed for everyone a few days ago anymore either. There's no meaning to those assignments anymore. From here on, 
I will be working with the other year three teachers to prepare something new for everyone to review intensely with, because I'm sure that everyone already knows that the lead question setter this year is Zhong Yi. A male student anxiously asked, how could they change the scope of the exam now, didn't they already approve it beforehand? With this last-minute change, how are we expected to be able to take the exam? That's right. Teacher, what should we do? The female teacher said, the scope of the exam definitely won't change. It's more or less going to be the same as what we have told you all to study before today. Those are the subjects that the exam questions will be based on. However, a good question setter will still be able to stop you from getting the correct answer even if they provide you with the exact subject, or the proper formula to start with. It's regrettable, but our year 3 group of teachers has analyzed that Zhong Yi is likely to be such a person. He is possibly the only one in the Chinese math field who has the highest understanding of logic operations and algebra, along with a few other topics. According to our worst-case scenario, his questions will be very difficult to answer if you just attempt to solve it using the most conventional methods. That is why this college entrance examination's mathematics section is really going to be a test of everyone's quality. At Beijing No. 14 High School Teacher Can you highlight the main subjects for us? Yes, everyone says that Zhong Yi's questions will be very difficult. He wouldn't possibly make us compose a poem, would he? I just hope that the essay questions will not be written by him. The weight of points on the essay section is too high. Teacher Zhong, what kinds of questions will Zhong Yi give? The students were talking one after another. The no. 14 high school. Chinese literature teacher held it in for a long time before finally shaking her head and saying, I don't know either. All you can do right now is completely memorize the entire scope of the subject for the exam, and then. She stopped there, not wanting to tell them that she could only offer them a blessing on this matter. With John Yi's literary level, no one in the entire country could possibly guess the questions that he would write or which train of thought the questions would be based on. You'd say hi. Hurry up, class. Everyone has to finish these three sets of exams today. Ah? What exams are these, teacher? These are the three most difficult sets of exams over the years in all the national college entrance exams that have been held. Everyone, prepare yourselves for this, but it may be possible that this year's Beijing college entrance math exam might be the most difficult ever. The Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board has already sent a very clear signal about this. This time, with Zhong Yi's surprising inclusion in the college entrance examination's question-setting team, it not only caught the examinees off guard, even the teachers were affected and blindsided. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.